feel I feel like it, it would be good to do a a FXR tour recap with you because we kind of share we've shared a lot of a like similar experience with us both kind of building uh, choppers. Don't, wanna, <laughs> don't don't get butt hurt. Don't get butt hurt. <laughs> uh, uh, just like just going that route, right? Yeah. Some a, a chopper esque, if you will, kind of build and um, you know we had you in the podcast right before uh the lone star camp out yep. which was at the i think we you were in here in august yep. the reason i wanted you to do this because i wanted to kind of talk a little bit about the the last few weeks leading up into the tour yeah and i know that when we did that podcast originally like i was i had a lot of stuff rolling but it wasn't really until september hit that it was like <laughs> an obsession it was like it just consumed my entire life and yeah. so I kind of wanted to get your thoughts of like, what was it like for you those last few weeks leading up? Because we had a lot of phone calls. Yeah, yeah, we did. I mean, it was, um, everything is stressful that, you know, you do when you're building or creating or trying to get something out of your head out into like in front of your face. Um, the last couple weeks were just as stressful, but I felt like they were more special because it was like you put in all this work to kind of lay out your, you know, your mock up and, you know, you hope everything kind of goes together and nothing really does, of course. But as you start to like get the finishes of like the paint, you know, the, the body work from the frame and all that different stuff come together, that's when like you kind of forget about the stress and you're just like so excited that you just like one thing comes in front of your face and normally you'd freak out like on a normal customer job, be like, damn, what am I going to do with this? You know, whatever issue might be. And you kind of stress out. Mm -hmm. This was more like, okay, cool. What do we need to do to just like keep rolling? Yeah. And so that was like the whole point of like, just keep rolling, keep doing whatever we needed to do because of the, the, the deadline, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it was like unique in the fact that the whole like, because obviously I have, you know, my, my mechanic Wayne. Mm -hmm. So the whole like vibe of the shop was totally different. It was, we were very chill, but it was like we were going to war together and we oh. knew we weren't going to leave each other behind type deal. So it's like we had a mission. I have your back. You got mine. Like we're going to get this accomplished no matter what mm -hmm. and it was like it was just a lot of fun because I didn't have like literally I would take my phone and I'd put it away like I didn't have those distractions of like the the business the everyday kind of customer stuff or even like my wife you know knew that hey we were busy doing this one thing so like if it's not like life death fire blood leave it <laughs> you know what I mean and so that's basically what happened was just got in super focused and started seeing the vision come to life um and then obviously all the issues that like I came across and other people were coming across, like we were all, the, the chat was just yeah, on fire, on, you fire. Know, on fire. Hey, I need this last thing. Hey, what are you doing for this? Like that was a lot of fun helping each other out, you know, yeah. accomplish that goal too. What was like the first hang up that you really felt like, oh shit? <laughs> uh, the first one was, so when we did the mock-up, um, we were really tight on schedule. So this mm -hmm. is before the frame was painted. The frame was raw. And some of the pictures that were released of like the motor and the tranny in there, there was some of the fittings for the oil lines and the breathers were totally removed just to get them in because they were touching. Mm -hmm. Well, we kept moving, kept solving other problems, ordering more parts, you know, getting things fabricated, whatever. I totally did, forgot, forgot yeah. you know, that that was that. And so then once the frame came back and it was like, hey, this is going in forever, we put it together forever and then i was like oh shoot i'm gonna go you know i started doing the oil lines and things weren't there and yeah. then i had to take it back out and then you know you're, you're worried about hitting the frame so then we had to put the motor up um and using like the stock breathers like mm -hmm. it it touched the tranny so there was no way you could even butt them up at all mm. so i had to like get creative but like also what can i get quickly so i jumped on amazon i found these brass little breathers mm -hmm. that you would use on like head bolts mm. uh, of like you know your head breathers and put that in there put it together and perfectly fine perfect. and it looks really cool too because yeah. it's like brass so it matches like the vibe of the bike yeah it's something i've never really seen before either kind of matches again like the bike um but it solved a problem like delivered next day like 8 a.m and i was like yeah. Sweet, we can keep rolling now. I'm actually embarrassed to say that I actually used Amazon on a couple of things as well. Oh, I did too. <laughs> um, just like I said, it was like last day. I think I hit you up about like the the master link for the chain. Yeah. Um, wasn't Homeboy's fault, but he kind of 
he said he knew how to do the chain, so he was doing it, and which he didn't know how to do it, but he he just adjusted it and put the master link on without letting me know that uh you know Frank's swing arms uh, the speed dealer swing arms has those extended and the yep. shorter versions of uh like the adjusters, the, the adjusters yeah. right so he had the shorter one on there so it wasn't adjusted all the way to the front right so by the fi- by the time you adjust it out to allow the chain on or to to master link it and then by the time you ju- adjust it back out you're 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 way back. You're, you're butted up against the rear of the swing arm so yeah. i'm like it was enough to ride it around and kind of like bop, bop around Dallas and kind of put some miles on it, but it was definitely not okay to ride across the country yeah. or halfway across the country, right? And so Amazon, you know, I was able to find a master link and ordered a – I like to use Rivet master links. Yeah. I, I find them to be a lot more, you know, safe yeah. or, you know, not popping off. But not that I think it had ever happened, but I always keep like a, a, a clip on master link like in my little bar bag or tool tool roll up when I run chain bikes, right? right. So just in case. Anything can happen. Yeah. You always got to be prepared, you know. And that's the same kind of concept and mentality of like while you're building something or you're putting something together, stuff can happen. You always have to have like a backup. So like I, you know, I've done chains. Wayne's done millions of chains. But things can happen. Dude, I had two backup chains just in case. Because I didn't know like where the adjustment would fall because of that tranny that I used. It has the oil pan that sticks further past. Mm. So like the wheel can get pretty close, but you don't want it, you know, really close. But then with that adjustment, like you were saying, the two different lengths that he sends, I had to go like one more after we already cut the chain. So I had to take that one back off and put a longer link chain. Yeah. So if, if I didn't have it, you know, of course, maybe drag had it, maybe in stock, whatever. But it just like it hinders like you from progressing, Yeah. which is not what you want when you're building something yeah, and you got two weeks left and you right. need to shake it down and right yeah and yeah. so we were fortunate enough to where from the day the frame hit the lift to the day we fired the bike it was seven days mm. so exactly one week and then an additional two days after that so nine days till me on bike riding bike mm-hmm. because of that full like basically almost like 200 i think i counted it was 265 days from the conception of like the idea to like I wrote it. Yeah. So those other 250 whatever days it was, was just like me thinking every single little piece through like to the nth degree to where like I couldn't sleep at night. Like I'm like, oh man, is this really going to work with this thing? Or like, do I need mm-hmm. to go do this? Or like, because a lot of that stuff's not supposed to yeah, melt be together. together. Yeah. Right. So even getting like beyond like the motor and tranny touching each other, like the frame with that tranny because of the kickstand, just a bunch of different stuff didn't mesh Mm -hmm. until like you go in there and you start chopping things and making things Mm. work. So that's what we did. I mean, it was so much difficulty that like even the clutch cable, we had to put it in the, um, the lathe to machine down the, like where the the fitting goes into the adjuster Mm -hmm. because the hand controls that I was using weren't supposed to be for like a Harley. So that that basically that elbow was too fat. Mm. Well, I couldn't get another one. This was like two days or three days before we were supposed to leave. So we had to literally stick it in the lathe, and it's you know the clutch cable is doing this, and <laughs> you know we're holding on to it, and it's just going. But we figured it out, and works perfect. Mm. You know, it's those things like you got to know just just keep going, just keep going, yeah. just keep working through the process of like what needs to be done, how can we do it? Do you have the tooling? Do you not? Do you know somebody who has the tooling? Like, it was very rough <laughs> those two yeah. weeks. But it was, like, a good ride. Like I said, it was, like, it was more exciting than anything because it's just, like, we didn't let anything stop us, mm-hmm. which was, like, it kept putting this, like, highs and lows. Like, oh, dang, what are we going to do about this? Oh, well, we figured it out. And then the next day, oh, no, we got So yeah. it's just, like, but it was a lot It's of a roller fun. coaster ride for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say, like, to your point of the the first, like, if you were to break it up in thirds, right? The first two thirds of the time that we were doing the builds was just all like you're trying to put things in places and like you said you're you're trying to envision up stuff and a lot of things are out of your hands. I feel like at the time you got stuff on order, right. you know. Maybe you know for me it was like the frame was at Corey's, right. um, but after Sturgis, that last that last third was just all hands on deck for this thing coming together, and it was a completely different involvement a completely different like connection to the bike that i had before because i you know justin will tell you like i had talked with him right either right before sturgis or right after where i thought i was gonna have to pull out yeah you told me too 
Yeah. I was like, what? I was like, there's no way. I was like, whatever, whatever <laughs> we need to do, like, you have to be there. Like, well, I was, I would have been there regardless. Yeah, but I mean, but like, with like, your bike, yeah. you know, like, it there. was, it was just coming down to a line. Um, I think that in any time we like try to imagine what our year looks like, the you know, prior to living it, right? Um, I just had so much on my plate with, you know, everybody gave me shit. Like, why'd you get the ST knowing you have the FXR build? But it didn't, you know, like the FXR was at, at Corey's at the time doing the fab work. So it wasn't like, it, I mean. It wasn't stopping you from It wasn't forward. stopping me right. from doing something else. Yeah. And, um, you know, with the camp out and then the ST and then going to, you know, Born Free and then coming back and doing the homies trip and then coming home and going back to Covington's for right. a week and, now I got a week until Sturgis and, you know, I, I, I kind of front loaded financially to be able to get through the summer, but I got through the summer right. and I ain't have well, that's what I was, much money left. Right. That's what I was also going to touch on too, is like, not only do we have a deadline, you know, not only do we have to build this bike, but you know, we own businesses, you know, mm -hmm. we have customers, but this wasn't for a customer. This is for us out of our own pocket with our own time. Yeah. So it's like, not only does it cost you money, it's costing you time because that's what we do, you know, yeah. this kind of industry and with what we offer is we're selling time. Mm -hmm. So it costs you twice as much if you really like sat down and looked yeah. at it. And just like you said, you know, you did all these things. Well, this was my first year in like business like yeah. at the actual shop. So I had no idea what was going to go down while I've already agreed to like do this crazy thing. And it, you know, the business just shot up and took off. And luckily like customers have been really cool with like understanding like previous obligations. And that's because, you know, I've communicated like, Hey, just so you know, before I accept this, I have to do these things and this is where you'll yeah. land, you know? But yeah, you have to make money to do cool stuff like this, and yeah, then it's so, on. <laughs> yeah, one of the, that was probably the biggest thing that was kind of pushing me to where I felt like I was I was going to pull out was, uh, to be honest with you, it was a it was a large sponsor that pulled out of the deal, and was going to leave me high and dry on yeah. a, on a certain thing that I just didn't know how I was going to like replace that item right financially. Yeah, and, it's a big piece of the build. Yeah. And fortunately, it worked out where I was able to. But um, I don't know. It's, it's the same thing. Like when, I, when we built this studio, I don't know where that money came from. Yeah. Like <laughs> I have no idea. Like I had like four grand and then all of a sudden it costed 12 grand. Yeah. And somehow I hustled the money working, doing things yeah. to, to facilitate the, the you know, exactly the money. exactly with me with mine. Like so um, the, the biggest thing that I put off on the whole bike like while it was being like manifested was the motor. Mm. But I knew for sure, like without a doubt that that is what I was going to do. I wasn't going to do an Ultima. I wasn't going to rebuild a shovel. I wasn't going to do like a 111 Evo. I wanted what I wanted because it was like in my head. And literally like I had reached out, reached out, reached out. And mind you, like I do a lot of business with this brand and sell a lot of their stuff. And finally, like the day that the Midwest rep got back to me and approved my, um, catalog with them because they sell Ultima and I was like you know what Wh whether or not like I want this motor or not like I have to get the bike done like so I got down to the point where I was like okay I, I get it Rennie like you want this but you can't have it this is the next best best thing right so literally the day I got the email saying congratulations you're approved for this Midwest account where they sell Ultima was the day I got an email from SNS where they're like oh man dude sorry we've been so busy w what do you need like I didn't get the motor for free. I got, you know, slight bigger discount from dealer, but it helps. Yeah. But that was the biggest thing that I just kept putting off. Like, That's a big chunk of money, dude, too. Dude, I know. And what was crazy was I didn't have the money, but like you said, I just like looked up, was like, I have to make this happen like yeah. tomorrow end of day. And just hustled, 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 and boom, here we go. Here's the motor. Thank you. And then yeah. now it's just like, what else? You next. Know? Yeah, next, next, <laughs> next, next, next. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, there was no like there was no financial thing that big at one chunk. It was kind of like a thousand here, a thousand there, yeah. eight hundred here, five hundred there. And that's what was freaking me out because when we're in the group chat, I'm asking certain people, like, hey man, like how much you anticipating you're putting in this? Or like, hey man, how much do you have in your bike so far? And I'm like, dang, did I mess up? Like, because like, I'm like way, like way up there early on. And I was just like, maybe I'm not doing this right. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was just, well, I think it's, uh, I think it's the, 
it's the, it's the little small things, those nickel and dime things. I, I said before, like the 40 runs back and forth to Ace Hardware. And it's not even just the parts for the bike. It's like, oh, shit, now I need a – my Unibit broke. Now I need a big – another one that's a $60 drill bit, but I also need a whole bunch of other ones. So now I got $150 in drill bits that I just had to buy just for this specific right. project. And so it's not just like, okay, I have 100 – you know, I have X amount of dollars in the bike. I have X amount of dollars to make this bike happen. Right. You know, uh, paint, one thing, I don't I don't get sponsored paint by anybody. Yeah. So – uh, the paint on the bike was expensive. I mean, I probably got twenty five hundred bucks in materials on that bike, and it's a chopper. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's a chopper. It's not supposed to be that, <laughs> you know. And yeah. so between yeah, luckily, that, it just it works out. Luckily, yeah. Just I mean, like I said, I, I I had a few helmets that I sold. I took so just to to be an open book. The way that I did it was like I held off on taking in helmet orders uh, for quite some time to. Uh, for the sake of, okay, maybe I'm going to get to the point where I need to take in deposits on new ones. Right. And those deposits will help facilitate the money I need to finish things out. And so, you know, that's pretty much what ended up happening. It's like, because when I sell a helmet, I'm actually, you know, I'm selling the helmet and there's a, a little bit of money that goes towards like the paint deposit. Right. Right. So each, each you sell 10 helmets and, you know, each one of them, like I'm making 500 bucks, like that's five grand. Right. Right. And then obviously yeah. with what we do, you know, you're a painter. You know, I sell parts and blah, blah, blah. You know, we came to an agreement to make a little yeah, deal, yeah. too, so where I could have my wife get, you know, a helmet painted for our anniversary, and mm -hmm. you needed some parts, and, hey, cool, like, yeah. we can all help each other make it go down. It's perfect. Just like you and, you know, Corey, Corey did, yeah. same exact deal. He needs a paint job. You need some fab work. Perfect. Yeah. And I pretty much got all the parts that I had to order through drag from you, so that I appreciate all the help on that. Yep. And, um, yeah, it was just kind of like one of those weird things, man, like, once once the ball started rolling, you know, like I said, I had that hiccup where I felt like I was going to have to back out financially. And then, you know, Justin, you, everybody was like, no, I'll keep going, blah, blah, blah. And it, it felt nice to to feel like you had people like, yeah, like believing pushing you, you right? like and believing in you and trusting you like to trust us to like listen to us because we don't know your personal yeah. situations at all times. Right. But like to know that you can trust your friends to like look at you and be like, hey, man, yeah, you got this, bro. Just just relax. Cause there was one time where, for maybe like half a day, I was just like, "Man, what, what, what am I doing? Like, why did I agree to this? Like, they're like, but this was like super early. This was after like you announced like the rest of the guys. Yeah. Cause I got on like super early before. Yeah, I told you about it in December. Yeah, yeah, before like the list was made, and I was just like, "Yeah, sure, sign me up, no problem." Cause I was thinking like, friendly, you know, kind of not not bottom tier dudes like what I am, but just like normal guys and then the list came out, i was like oh shoot what am i doing like i have to do something crazy like and i can't afford it and my skill set's not quite there and yeah you know i've never done something that wild i would say you know yeah. like i've always done the normal kind of my style like club style whatever vintage style but never like this like yeah where i just meshed all these different things and just i don't know it worked out i guess yeah well that's kind of the thing about doing I guess if you look at our world, like everything's publicized, right? Everything we do is on social media. So we don't really have the ability to kind of do things behind the scenes. Like uh, if you're to build a bike of this caliber, this much time, this much money, this much effort, you, you can't not do that publicly. Yeah. Right. As a brand. Right. I mean, for, for us these days, it, I'm talking about in our world people, yeah. not not everybody. This isn't a... Yeah, I mean, you, can, you there's definitely times where, like, you want to be privately doing something cool because you don't want to show the world because you're maybe you're afraid of what they might think about it. Mm -hmm. But once you get over that feeling of wanting, like, the validation and you don't care if people are watching, you never know who you might actually inspire, yeah. which actually gives you more of motivation to keep showing them what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you can capture that feeling it's okay to be private, but like even without the brand, you know, even before, like when I was in my garage, I felt like I wanted to show some people different things of like how I got motivated or how I was able to do what I do mm -hmm. to get me to this point. So yeah, hide some stuff, but like it was really cool to show everybody everything. I felt like what we yeah. were doing, you know, even though like there were some times where I didn't want to show anybody what yeah. we were doing because like, you know, even the group chat, I was like, man, you're like post the paint. I'm like, Ugh, you know, Cause you're a painter you know it's just like this is the one thing i wanted to surprise people with like especially yeah you, like, yeah 
Well, you know, I'm, I'm like I said, if it was 20 years ago and we were able to start working on and building bikes and learning how to fabricate and had a chance to just kind of fuck up in the garage and not have to have the whole world see it yeah, <laughs> or fuck up and ride it to bike night. And it was only going to be 30 or 40 people that would see the fuck up instead of like, you know, thousands of people, thousands. So it's like, I feel like it would be easier, but I think that now the motivation through having all the eyes on it forces you to want to get better quicker. So I feel yeah, like, um, I would agree with that. I think me and you are both in the same boat of like, I probably had more resources of like people like relationships. And that's one thing me and you talked about yeah. a lot is like building a bike is like creating the relationships with the people that you need on the outside to help you come through. Right. Right. Um, but I think that we both got the bug of wanting to do more of it ourselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So like, obviously, uh, Jacob Kennard, huge help. Xavier from Providence cycle, huge help. Wayne, of course, huge help. Um, you know, every chooch, chooch, absolutely yeah. huge help. Um, like having all my customers, you know, purchasing every, every, everything they've done, you know, all the giveaways, the merchandise that's, you know, t-shirts, hats, every, everything, everything, all that stuff helps. Mm -hmm. But yes, recently through that experience, watching people create something that like was in my head, like as like a, you know, a creative person, I would call it you want to be the person who does it. Like, I don't want to sit and tell somebody like your perfect painting and watch somebody paint it. There is there, you know, that is okay to a certain degree, but once you like just jump up, you're like, well, let me see the paintbrush. Let's see if I can try to paint. Yeah. Oh, maybe you didn't have a canvas. So you went and bought a canvas, maybe you bought the material. So like, that's the kind of area I got into, like after the bike got done, like once I got back to the shop, I was like, okay, you know, I bought a welder, I bought some different, you know, metal shaping equipment so that way I could like see what I can do, you yeah. know, after going through and learning different people's processes, spending time with them, asking questions, it got me excited to like keep elevating my brain, you know, cause I get bored. I yeah. think any creator or artist or anybody who does something with their hands, they can get easily bored where you want to be challenged, but you want to challenge yourself to see like, mm -hmm. you don't want to like prove something to people. That's not me. Like I wanted to prove it kind of to myself. Like, yeah. can I do this? Or not. And if not, cool. I'm going to go do something else. But you just keep looking for something else. So, yeah, I think next year I'm definitely going to, you know, continue building bikes, obviously. But, like, next year I'm going to kind of take more into my own hands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just to see how I can get some of the stuff that's in my head out, you know. Yeah. Without having to explain it. I can just go through the process of learning how to do it. Yeah. No, that's that's exactly it, man. Um, having, you know, the welder and stuff here. Uh, wanting to add a few more tools to make the process a little bit more streamlined. And, uh, you know, I feel like quality tools, you either got to have the most patience in the world or just really high quality tools. Yeah. You, you can know. have a cheap lift, but you can't have a cheap toolbox. <laughs> yeah. That's what somebody taught me early on. And I mean, my setup, I have a cheap lift, but my toolbox costs as much as a, as a truck pretty yeah. much with everything that's in it. And yeah, you definitely have to have good tools. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, uh, and like I said, I, you know, the same, like I have so many talented people in the fabrication space around me that if I really just, if I, if I just take the plunge and I start, you know, like I was telling you in the car, I want to pick up one of those old sporty tanks from drag yeah. and just chop and Frisco mount it myself. Right. Just, just practice. Right. You it's, know, it's, you got to think about it like this, um, like you can pay somebody to do it. You can pay to go to school to learn it. Or you can buy the materials to do it yourself and mess up 10 times. And it's probably still cheaper than having somebody do it for you. Or you spending $30,000 to go to welding school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it's just up to you which one. I mean, if you're easier. in a position to go to welding school, right. like there's nothing wrong with that. Right. right. But if you can be in a position to uh, have somebody that you can like apprentice under in some form or fashion, maybe not full on apprenticeships. Like I'm here for the next eight months, but you know, one of those deals where like, Hey, I'm going to, you know, if, if it's cool with you, can I come out once a week and just kind of like clean up your shop? Right. And then, you know, maybe you can help me out with this thing that, you know, I'm, I'm stuck on at home. And, and that's one of the things that I feel like people, it, you can learn quicker if you take the initiative and then run into a roadblock, you can, you're seeking the right answers at that point. Right. Yeah. If you hit like that roadblock missing, though, like that, yeah. that doesn't really exist anymore. I feel like in the industry only because like I'm younger and I've, recently come up 
in it and I've experienced different people and businesses that are within it. I feel like the guys who really know what they're doing, they don't really want to tell you or show you anymore. Yeah. Like there's no such thing as like sweeping up some shops anymore. Like that, yeah, that's kind of gone. I, I think, feel like. well, it's, or it's harder to find somebody who's willing to like, I think most of us hear the guy that says they want to sweep in the shop and then they never fucking show up a sweep. Right. There's that. So too. <laughs> they, they, they show up and they're like, Hey man, so when can I pick up an airbrush? And I'm like, dude, you haven't picked up the broom yet. Right. You know, but you know, uh, Yaniv said this to me when we did the podcast with him and I don't think he said it. I think he actually said it on the podcast. He goes forever. I was keeping all these things that I learned to myself, but then I started thinking about the fact that the guy that taught me, if he would have taught me, it would have died with him. Right. So at some point, I think that everybody that has a creative drive or, you know, whether it's a fabrication or painting or whatever the case may be, everybody's got to get to that point where you, you pass that knowledge to somebody. Yeah, he even yeah. gave me knowledge on the build. Um, early on, when I was going to put a springer on the front, I messaged him. I was like, hey, I know you've done this. Like, is there anything I need to avoid? And he's like, yes, avoid the whole thing. He's <laughs> like, because ne it never works out right. There's so much fabrication in, involved with just like a fork stop or – you know, getting the clearance for the neck, it's going to hit the, the tank or it's going to hit the frame. Like he just kept running through all this stuff. And we were on the phone literally for probably all of an hour and a half to maybe two hours running through all the part numbers on the ones he's tried. And he ended up, you know, using an original vintage Harley Springer. Well, like I had him literally go out and measure certain things about it. I ordered two and found the one closest to it and had to modify it and heavily modify the frame to make it work. But yeah, he was just like, what do you need? Like, how, yeah. are you you really going to do this? Like, this is going to be awesome. Let me help you. Yeah. That's kind of rare. You know what I mean? Because well, everybody's like kind of ego, I feel like, gets in the way where they're just like, if it ain't from me, it ain't from anybody. And, you know. Yeah. Well, it depends who you talk to, I guess. It does. I mean, I think that like, every, I think everybody wants to fight their, I don't know. I, I think what ruined it was the, hey, bro, what fairing is that? Yeah. Because all the people that had the experience we're getting bombarded early on years ago or recently or whatever. They got basically turned off to the idea yeah. through some experience of being like annoyed mm. is what it comes down to. And then versus like people lazily asking right. questions about something instead of taking the time to curate a, right. a real thought out question. Right. Hey and, man, I've been looking for the, uh, the, the right type of fairing for my bike for the longest. And man, I came across your bike and it just, it, it, it sits just right. Do you mind if I ask like, man, is that something yeah. that and I could, so like I get questions too, but, like, it depends on the type. I can always tell, like, if this is really something they don't know or something that they just haven't even looked up. Mm -hmm. Like, you want to go into technical stuff? Sure, I'll answer your question all day. But if you're just asking me, like, hey, man, like, whose grips were those on that bike you posted? Come on, man. Like, yeah, just Google motorcycle grips for Harley. Open yeah. a catalog. Like, it's there. Like, yeah, you have a picture already. Right. So Versus, like... The guy asking you some different cam lift stuff or like, hey, like if I'm doing this sequence, like what is the run out for this? Like all that stuff. Sure. You yeah. really don't know. And that's like you can go into a very long like rabbit hole on the Internet and get lost. You know, well, I, th I think it's delivery, man. Like you, right. you were just saying, it's like it, if you if you come to the table with a, a properly put together question, that's going to show the person that you're asking a lot more. Um, a, it's going to show them where you're at in, in your journey with what you're doing. And, and like I said, the lazy, like, whose exhaust is that? And then yeah. all you have to do is click the fucking picture. Right. And it's or just right zoom there, in. It's dude. Everybody's logos, three on their exhaust. Like, yeah. just zoom in a little bit. Just dude. try, dude. Yeah, just try. Just try. try a little harder. <laughs> you know? Um, and it's crazy because I remember whenever I was first getting the Dyna stuff back in the day, I, I was at a shop in NorCal. And I asked the guy, I was like, hey, man, I said, what fairing was that? I was like, hey, where do I find a fairing like this? Right. And he was like, Better oh, question. I go to Conley's. That was the brand back in the day that everybody was going with. I'm like, oh, cool. I ordered one the next day, and Bob's your uncle, right? right. So, yeah, it's um, so cool when you see like those old Conley fairings pop up still because you're like, those are nice, dude. I know you're like, man, that thing's a dinosaur, dude. Where'd you get that artifact? Because it's like so rare, you know? Like, yeah, wow. that was one of the only fairings that were fiberglass. It was fiberglass solid. in and out. So solid. So, you, on the back side, you didn't have that rough, <laughs> you didn't have that rough fiberglass dude, so going good. on. So it was, it was a super nice piece. Yeah. I ran those quite a bit for a while. I picked up a Dyna recently since I've gotten rid of it, obviously. But the fairing was the Conleys. I was mm. like, oh. Like, I was just like, I just wanted to, like, touch it. I was like, man, just hold it. so quality, dude. <laughs> like, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it sucks they went away, man. I know. But, you know, so, like I said, during this process, I think that 
it just opened up my eyes to a lot of things that um put it like this the things that have become monotonous in in my day to day the the painting the airbrushing the things that I've kind of wanted to get away from for so long this made me want to do it I, I could tell yeah so like when we were going through the process you like you're like hey man I'm gonna repaint this like I'm gonna fix this I'm gonna do this like it, it was just cool to see like even like TPJ like to see yeah. him kind of evolve and grow and do his thing and like find his little avenue he's in now yeah I think everybody kind of did that on this tour or this yeah. challenge or this experience I call it mm -hmm. you know everybody kind of stepped a little bit back into some of what they know but then like a whole bunch of like excitement of doing something new you know mm -hmm. what I mean and just like reinvigorated a bunch of people I could tell yeah yeah I, now that you say that I, I I could see that how maybe maybe it was the challenge that was presented by doing this that made people step out of their uh their comfort zone in a in a in a way that like think about it like i'm really diving down this this concept you just put there because i think most of us as brands we we get to this point and then we got to make money right so we're like all right let's get to this and then let, let's just ride this wave cruise control as as long as we can and not to say that not, not downplaying any of the yeah, brands but of course when you throw a challenge like this it makes you have to like get off that wave and look and, and just create something new right right and um and your day yeah. changes so you start to feel different emotions versus just the showing up to the shop. Oh, yeah, I got to do this whole chain. Showing up to the shop or I got to do this top end. It's just, it's different. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to show up to the shop, but I'm going to stay late tonight versus you trying to get out of here early because mm -hmm. you have to be motivated to do this one thing. And I have to solve this one problem that's never existed. So like your, your brain's firing these different, you know, emotions and neurons and different things that are connecting. And you're just like, this is new. Like, yeah. whoa. And you just kind of emotionally just like step up a little bit like in your yeah. brain you know what i mean it was i haven't released it yet but me and cody childress we did a podcast that'll come out probably monday and we talked a little bit about it but he gave me some of this 100 and, oh. 121 <laughs> proof so we didn't drink that much i mean we drank half a bottle but i was slurring at, a, at an hour so fire water yeah it's it's smooth it, it's not oh, hot really? at all yeah that's what was crazy about it but he had some great questions that I fucking just was not <laughs> mentally there for, you know? And um, I think that, like, we were – and I know we, we got to move on into the tour stuff, but follow me down this path yeah. real quick. Um, with, with you know, Dinas and, and Softtails and Performance Baggers and all this stuff that's been kind of like the, the thing for my brand and yours and, you know, Devin over here has been in it too. It's like what, like – what is it about like this that feels so much different and so much more fun as opposed to like another bike where you're just kind of like adding parts to it? I feel like for me personally, the answer to that would be because I didn't do what everybody else was doing or has done. I did something that the whole way through I wanted to do, no matter what the finished product would look like. Right. Yeah. Or the style. Like I'm not talking about like, the style of the bike being done it's just like you'd like you would wake up for example you knew like okay man i gotta i gotta put a gas tank on oh you got to sleep <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you know like you're thinking about your gas tank yeah when you're normally doing this thing where you're putting bars and seed exhaust cam chest you're not thinking about your gas tank yeah you're not ever even thinking about your rear fender well you had to think about all these new components that like gets you more excited and more involved mm -hmm. to where you have to really think about the overall picture of everything that gets you like, it's new. Like, mm -hmm. like I said, I've never had to think about like, Oh, what is the gas tank going to look like? It's like, no, it's the gas tanks were whatever came on the bike. Like, yeah, you can paint them. Sure. But like, yeah, you know, ultimately you can put a gas cap on it. <laughs> you know, like there's a couple different things you could do, but that's about it versus yeah. like, well, where's it going to sit on the frame? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you start tapping into this like feeling where it gets you more excited just like in a different way versus like, well, how high and what finish do I want my bars? Like you've done that so many times that just doesn't get you excited. Yeah. You know, I think last time I was on here, we were talking about the bike. I was like, man, it just gets me horny, you know, like, yeah. cause that was like the feeling. It's like, you get this different feeling where you're like, you know, as a kid growing up, you finally get to like teenager and see a girl, you're like, whoa, this is new. What is that feeling? Yeah. That's what it was. It was just like, no, that's a good analogy. Different, yeah. you know, different juices are flowing, you know what yeah. I mean? Versus just like cool bike. Yeah, that's 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 a good way to put it. I think that's 
uh, spot on. Um, it, and everybody did that. I felt like. Yeah, uh, it, it's like like you said, like you're 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 looking at different parts on the bike that you normally don't. Right. You could probably loosen yeah. it, and pop it up. It's. You're good. Um, you're looking at different parts that you normally don't mess with on a bike, and that's like the challenge in it. How do I customize this thing that I have been leaving alone for so long? Right. And that was like one of the things like we were doing the bike, me and Corey like obsessed over was, and I, I think I had already knew I was going to run the fender, the rear fender that I had, but we still had to, we still had to mock it up. Like originally it was going to be a much like tucked in more. Yeah. And we ended up pulling, like there was just things and it's like those small things that most people will never know. It's like those made the difference of like, how I felt looking at it and whatnot. And I think that like, can you charge for the amount of time you looked at the bike, just looked at mm. it, just stared at it and figured shit out in your head. And then went home and sat there at the dinner table while your wife was telling you about her day. And then you're like, babe, I got to go back to the shop. I yeah, just, no, I had you something. can't charge for that. And that's why my bike probably will never be for sale. Yeah. Just because if it was for sale, it'd be an amount that if I said people would be like, Who's this guy think he is? Yeah. Because they don't understand, like I said, the 265 days of from like a piece of paper with a drawing of a frame to like this thing rolling down the road. Mm -hmm. It's a long time. But like, do you think it's like choppers in general? Because I, I wouldn't say that I'm like, I'm like hook, line and sinker, a chopper, you know, lover right now. It's not I, that I, I'm, I'm like, I'm bit, but I've been kind of bit like. I think I've I'm been into in, the old stuff, you know. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've always had chopper fever, but I never quite. I, I still don't know what, like, what I want out of that world yet. I still, yeah. you know what I mean. Well, that's what's most exciting for me is because I'm looking at a new or a, a, not a new platform to the world, but for my eyes, I'm not normally looking at. Normally, I'm looking at the two to one stainless pipes, yeah. the step up seats, the T bars, like normal stuff yeah. right of what we would consider in our world now like i'm looking at these bikes that you know it's more than just like what parts did they put on it's more like what parts did they collect or like mm -hmm. how does this thing like what's the story behind this or like and most people can look at those bikes even me some of them and i don't understand them yeah. until you start to talk to the dude and you're like okay cool tell me about that and he's like oh yeah this is a one-off piece by so and so one guy and it's like damn and then you go look it up and you're just like wow that's really you know that's really cool that is what got me involved with like wanting to probably do some more chopper stuff mm -hmm. personally because uh, just it's exciting again it's that new juices are flowing like you're looking at something just different you know and they're really they're kind of cool I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like, they're really badass you get on one like that day we we're in galveston and you got to go ride like a part of me was like ah, i want to go ride you know because they got they offered me the bike yeah. to go ride i was like kind of want to do this but like man if something happens I'm, hey, if that bike would have blew up, I was on it. I'd have been I'm like, out. "Hey, man, uh, I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and catch an Uber." Yeah, like uh, I would have been, you know, yeah. or just somebody cuts you off, or just anything can happen, dude. Like, dude, did I tell you that uh, uh, Bobby Seeger almost ate shit on that ride? You did tell me. Yeah, everybody was like, you know, he, excited to come tell me. I was like, "What?" Just because like, <laughs> like it doesn't mean he can't. He you know, almost day. ate the most shit, and I was right behind him when it happened, and it was like. Dude, Michael Lipter almost shorts. ate shit, too. And it was on that post he put where he took off on their bike. He hit that track and his rear wheel. Yeah. Dude, everybody. That's why I was like, you know what? Mm -mm. Mm. Not not today and not right now. <laughs> not yeah. on their bikes, either. I think that, like, me falling and, like, wanting to get more into the chopper stuff now, it's like I don't even know so much if it's I, – I don't know what – when I say chopper, I don't know. I don't yeah. know where – if I'm talking about vintage or – you know, the, you know, West Coast chopper style. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking. I'm just yeah. saying, like, just I like, like just want like. to do a bike that I touch more things on it, that I create more things, I make more things fit, whatever like that more, is. More of a, it's just taking the the term custom motorcycle uh -huh. and just adding more to the definition. Yeah, that's all it was for me. It was like, sure, you know, we joke, yeah, it's a chopper, it's not a chopper, it's an FXR, it's not, it's. It's it's at the end of the day, it's a custom motorcycle that was in my head. I chopped a lot of stuff off of it, so yeah, I'm gonna call it a chopper. Mm -hmm. Why not? It's fun. Throw yeah. it around. Let's have fun, right? Like, we're not. It's not supposed to be all serious all the yeah. time. You know what I mean? You're not supposed to get butt hurt about everything. Just have fun. And so, a chopper for you could be whatever you define that. Like, yeah. 
it the the word itself was kind of loosely created by doing what taking a bike and chopping stuff off of it that you didn't want and finding stuff you did chopping that to make it work to put on this bike cool that's a chopper in my opinion agree yeah for whatever that opinion's worth you know yeah just that, depends who you ask i was thinking about how like uh yeah i don't even know if i want to go there <laughs> is it raining yeah, it sounds like oh, it. Damn, Maybe cool. the fire will be off the question, but Dude, garage kinda, parties. Kind of set the mood in here. Got some yeah. rain going. The lighting. Put some Casey and JoJo on. <laughs> or talking uh, choppers. And juices are flowing. <laughs> I left my knife at the house, though. So. Um, That's why you can't come up with the idea in your head because yeah. you have your knife, dude. I, I don't know, man. I, I think that like it was just a – it it fixed two holes in my – love for creating stuff motorcycle wise because i I, the last couple years i've gone so much further down the rabbit hole of podcasting photography you know videography trying to create youtube videos that the idea of like i thought about taking the st down to the frame and doing stuff but i mean if i take it down the frame all i'm going to do is paint it yeah i'm not going to same right that's what i was going to say same tank right same all that shit you know i'm not looking at it like the way i looked at this fxr and that right there, the way I looked at that FXR is the way I want to go back into customizing bikes. Right. And because that's it's where I'm so at. much more rewarding. Right. And honestly, that's where I'm at even with like the business. So I've already, I've already come to the conclusion, like I'm going to change a lot of different things that I'm doing and the way that like I make bikes, create bikes, build bikes, whatever. Like um, I've got a couple right now in the shop where it's just kind of like the bolt on stuff, you know, but real heavily customized yeah. stuff. Right. Where, you know, it's obviously like a style thing. They want my style. No problem. But, like, I want to kind of start moving more into, like, what we just created. But for other people. Mm -hmm. Like, taking their ideas and making that come to life. But, like, really, like, digging into, like, the making the exhaust. You know, making the seat pan, sending it off to somebody. Customizing the tank to where it's, like, either dished or or just, you know, something really cool to where it's just, like, very unique to the individual who owns it and the person who created that, like yeah. the shop, me, you know, whatever. Um, and so because of the tour, I have two now, like chop style for open frame concept bikes that I'm going to be building for customers, mm. which really cool. Yeah. I mean, and I'll tell you that story about the frame. Yeah. <laughs> so I built for the FXR tour, the Indian Larry inspired FXR chop, right? Yeah. Just let everybody know, like, that was also supported by the people yes. around the Indian Larry yes. sphere now. It was not like... No, this yeah. was not like a shot in the dark, let me get some attention and ride a wave of somebody else. This was not what that was. Yeah. I love old school stuff. It's like, I'm pretty sure, like, if you know my history or know my brand or know me, like, that's what I love. The old school yeah. vintage, Easy Rider magazine, all that stuff. That's That's it. And... Found, you know, some old biker build-off stuff. I grew up in Daytona. So, like, all that was there anyway. Um, and I reached out early on. Like, hey, I have this challenge I'm thinking about doing. I really wanted to do, like, a chopper style. But I want to draw a lot of inspiration. I don't want it to be, like, a tribute bike. I don't want this to be, like, let me create every single thing and duplicate what he did and they did. Yeah. Not at all. To me, I felt like that would be disrespectful, in my opinion. Because mm-hmm. you're just trying to, like... Then you're riding the wave. Yeah, yeah. So I hit him up early on. Hey, are you guys cool if I do an inspired bike? I would love to meet you guys. Like, here's my thoughts. Here's my ideas. Here's why I'm doing it. Here's the reason, like, I even wanted to reach out in the beginning. And it was, like, pure love, 100% respect. Hey, man, come to New York. Hang out with us. Let's, let's right? All that good stuff. And we did. I went for the block party. I met Bobby. I met John the Painter. You know, I met a couple other people that helped run the day-to-day. I was in the back of the shop digging through stuff, looking for parts. Like, it was just an unbelievable experience. Like, took us to dinner. You know, I'm FXR Division. They're with us. Chris and Justin, they're driving Bobby Seeger's car. We're going to Coney Island in it. Like, it was just wild. It's really, yeah, yeah, just really wild. And then through that process, like, Paul Cox, we connected, met him there. We start talking. You know, I let him know, like, hey, man, it'd be really wild like just really wild if i could just like have a seat done by you just like just and that was just me being really excited and like reaching out kind of like on a whim he was like you know that's really cool i really like what you're doing i've been following along this idea what you got going on like that's right what do we need to do i was like 
well, it's in 14 days. And he's like, well, you know, like it takes me like a year or two. I was like, yeah, that's out of the question. Like, I can't wait. He's like, but he's like, and normally I start off at X amount. I was like, oh, that's way out of the question too. Like, yeah. even if I had the time, I don't have the money. And he's like, that's not what I'm saying. I just want to tell you what I normally do. And here's what I can do. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dude, like my, all my hair stood up on me. Like I got blood rush. Like I was like, and I was in the shop. I was like, Wayne, Wayne, dude, look, there's, there's no way. Look at this. Look what's going down. He's like, shut the fuck. You know, like he's yeah. just wigged out. And I was like, he couldn't believe it either. And then literally I sent him all my logos. Every look. Cause I was so excited. He's yeah. like, send me something. So I sent him every single thing I owned. He's like, okay, that's a lot, but okay. I was like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude, whatever. And so he makes the seat and then it matches the exact design that Chooch made of yeah. the tank. They never spoke to each other. I never knew the design Chooch was going to do either. So it was just weird how like this whole experience has been like surreal and just comes together like perfectly. Yeah. So fast forward a little bit further than that. Bike gets done. Boom. We're out riding it. We're showing it. We go to um, Amarillo. Trips Harley Davidson. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were there. So I yeah. don't really, you know. No offense, but like I don't remember meeting everybody, but I met a lot of people. Yeah, a lot that of was people. a lot of yeah. sensory overload for me. Like, so, boom, meet a bunch of people. Somebody just randomly messages me on Instagram wanting to buy the bike, and I'm like, you know, hey, not for sale. They're like, no, 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 but like, shoot me a price. Just, just even if it's not for sale, humor me. I was like, no, like, because if I play that game and you agree to it, I'm gonna be upset because now I have to sell it to you. So I yeah. didn't even name the price. And he was like, well, that's cool, man. I just love your bike. I was like, all right, well, I'll tell you what. He was like, would you be willing to let me build you your version of this? And he was like, sure. I didn't know that that was an option. I thought this was like a, a you deal. I was like, no, like kind of want to start playing with the idea of that open frame concept and kind of like the performance old school, like kind of my vibe, right? Yeah. And he's like, uh, I was like, what did you have in mind? Like if you could change anything on the bike, what, what would you have in mind? He's like, well, you know, take the shovel hood out because I want to ride it, you know, further, faster, all that good stuff. I was like, sure, no problem. He's like, kind of take the springer out of it. I kind of want to be more roadworthy performance. Okay, no problem. So we agreed to agree. And he's like, man, but my one stipulation is I want to do it with um, a 1984 frame. That's his birth year. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, man, I respect that. I can probably find it. I said, maybe give me a minute. But like, I know some people, right? I, I can find it. He's like, no, 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 I, I, I found one. I just haven't bought it. I can buy it, mm -hmm. but like, let me see if the dude will send it to you instead of me. I was like, okay. Like, again, you know, Instagram DM, okay, dude, we get it. Like, you need a week to buy this part. Well, sure, I'll see you later, right? Yeah. 10, 15 minutes later, he's like, all right, cool, man, I just bought this frame. I was like, still, again, like, okay, dude, you bought a frame, right? <laughs> he's like, I'm, uh, he's like uh, this is the one I bought. And he sent me a screenshot of a Facebook ad, like on mm -hmm. you know on Facebook, and right at the very bottom, the seller said Paul Cox, <laughs> and I was like, Nah, dude. I was like, This this is like some weird like I don't know like weird internet shit. You know, yeah. like you're fucking with me, dude. Like, um, and so I was like, Oh, cool. You have you you're buying a, a frame from Paul Cox, like, and it's the same you know picture from his Instagram, so I know it was him. Yeah. And it even said at Port Jarvis, New York. And I was like, that's really weird. And I messaged, I was like, how did you find this? He's like, no, I just searched like on Facebook, 1984, blah, blah, blah. It popped up. He's like, I just bought it. Let me ask the guy. I was like, don't worry about it. I was like, I'll talk to him. I know Paul. Like, you know, yeah. good enough to talk to him. Just so I could see if it was real. You know, like the, yeah. that was the really the point of like me getting in the middle of it. So I messaged Paul. I was like, hey, dude, pretty random. I was like, sorry if this is not, you know, real or whatever. I was like, but I have a client, a potential client who's want me to build him a bike. And he said he bought a frame from you. Can I just, can you just send it to me? He's like, oh yeah, the dude that just bought the frame, no problem. I'll send it to you. I was like, oh shoot. I was like, this is for real. Like, yeah. not like so many emotions, right? Like I, after building this bike for a year, this crazy concept. Not only does somebody like it, they want to buy it. I tell them no. Okay, cool. Then they want me to build them one. Then it's real. Then the frame comes from Paul Cox, who helped me on my seat, who was the person who, you know, created the dish tank that inspired me to do my dish tank. Like mm -hmm. this whole thing has just been like 
like I said, I'm just I, I keep yeah, saying it it. like I'm real. still I'm still waiting, dude. Like I don't know if I got like hit by a truck and I'm like in a coma right now and I'm like dreaming. Like that's how crazy a lot of this stuff has become. Like yeah. surrounding just one bike. It's well, crazy. That's the point, right? I, I, the crazy thing is that like if this was 20 years ago or even 15 years ago, we would expect to get people to want us to build bikes similar to the way we just built them, right? Yeah. That would be the whole concept of building a bike is to take it to a Sturgis or a Daytona and get people to want to hire us to build them bikes. Right. But I think that we're, we've just gotten so far away from someone like literally building a bike. Yeah. And that was kind of the concept that like uh, uh, Cody Childress brought up in the conversation that we had is, all right, so you, you, let's say you're a, 20 to 35 year old guy right you've and you're well enough you're well off enough to where you have an st or maybe a road glide and you know maybe you want to build another bike but you know one of these type of bikes is a nine ten month if not right. longer endeavor depending on if you want to do a paul cox seat maybe right. it's going to take longer to get right. this done right so keep that bagger or that that st to rip around and have fun on and get your motorcycle fix right but then you have this one in the burner, like yeah. in, in and the And I'm back. building, so I'm doing a frame up right now on an FXR that I've been working on for quite a few months, just because you know I had the obligations of the tour. But he's got a lowrider S, mm -hmm. you know, fully decked out. He's come to my camp out on it before I even met him while I'm building him the bike, like, and he's cool because he has something else. Now, yeah. had he have not had that, probably would be a little bit more like antsy, mm -hmm. which you know, totally okay. But yeah, like when you're going to have somebody do something that takes so long and that's the one thing you love to do, yeah, like ride your bike, then yeah, definitely have it. Well, so bike. we were just talking about it a while ago is like those, those last. So if I take the time that I put into the FXR from September 1st till October 10th, which is really the build time, yeah. right? Um, not even counting what Corey did and everything. But if I was to take all the hours spent to get that bike into that, and even like long time if i was to like go the lowest possible hour rate on uh on a um you know like a 75 bucks an hour which is half of what most of texas is yeah. right uh i want to you know what's a what's an average work week 40 hours and i'm definitely 10 12 hours a day uh yeah. saturday sunday for a month and 10 days um yeah, dude. That's what do so the fucking math. I started doing that, and that's what made me like not even want to tell this number because it's like you just I would I would sound crazy. Yeah, but it takes somebody crazy to do something like this that's and know labor. that like that's labor, dog. right? <laughs> that's labor. That ain't even the motor, right? The wheels, the bolts, right? So like, uh, one of my buddies, he was like, so like, just 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 humor me, like, because you know, friends, we could tell friends different things, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, well, I could tell you like this, just between the motor, the wheels. And a couple odds and ends is twenty grand mm -hmm. out of my pocket, like twenty thousand dollars that it would cost anybody to buy those things. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's not even a complete bike. That's not putting anything to get it to like. That's not even tires. That's, that's not the bar. That's nothing. Yeah, none of the fab work. That's literally hard parts you can buy off the shelf. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "Damn, dog." I was like, "Right. How much do you think this complete thing would cost you plus the labor?" Oh shit! Right, so never mind. I'm not gonna give you the number. You just just yeah. know that it's crazy. It's a it's a value thing, man. Like I think that you know when you if you build a bike with the intention of selling it, then you know you're. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. but I think that like you're gonna have a different. You build it with a budget in mind. A budget in mind, and you have like this. I don't know if you're really ever connected to it. You're not. You have a creative cap because you know at the end of the day, this goal. It's like um, pets. Perfect example. You get a kitten, you raise it, knowing that you're going to have this thing turn into a cat that's going to be around you and your family for as long as this cat exists versus cattle. You're raising this thing with no emotional attachment, like for one purpose, get it as fat, juicy as possible, and then see you later, dude. Pay my bills with it. Yeah. Same exact thing. That's all you're doing. You're either nurturing or you're not. Yeah, that's the difference. And especially when you build something like what we've done and what I've done, your emotional attachment to it, you're never going to build that same thing again. Because that's what I'm also worried it. about, because like, you know, I thought about, well, you know, like I said, uh, a lot of a lot of emotions came back or a lot of feelings came back through building this bike that's kind of a uh, 
it's got me going through a weird phase right yeah. but at the same time it's like well okay what if i open up the door to maybe build a bike somewhere for somebody else like yeah i stopped customizing bikes for people because i had a lot of really bad experiences like back to back to back yeah and some of that was communication error, error stuff that on my part and the customer's part but another it is story scary like but um, i'm scared that yeah. if i what if i was gonna do that and i couldn't provide that emotional attachment to that then i wouldn't be as happy doing it now it would feel like a, a like a job again yeah. and so i'm worried that like if if i was to go down that rat that path and not you know what i mean well see like the the excitement for that with me when i agreed to do this for this person was the excitement of knowing that they wanted this yeah versus you know I mean, I can't, exp I can't say because I never experienced it, but like, I, I can only assume like when you have like a, you know, you're farming out all this work or all these bikes and just like, it's just the next one, the next one. Like I, I really like take my time. Like when I'm doing like a frame up for somebody, I kind of get to know their style. I get to talk to them a little bit. Like I, I take my time in an essence of like, I don't want it to just be like, like what I just said, a cattle that just like, you just, this one purpose, I got to get paid on this one job and get it done and get it out of here. Cause mm -hmm. you don't care about it. Like all the bikes that I've done, it's been a handful of them for customers, like frame ups. But when they get the bike they're they're not going to sell it. You know what I yeah. mean? So like when I feel that, then that's what gets me excited enough yeah. to like have that passion again, where I get fired up. Like I just did on this project. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's yeah. where I'm feeling on this next project's like, okay, let's get a little crazier this time. Like, pretend like it's yours like hey here's the budget you know this is kind of where we're going to be dude are you cool with it because i'm going to get crazy i'm going to do the stuff that if i were to build one again for myself yeah. this is what it would be and That's you the thing. you know they're buying you they're buying a piece of you they yeah. want that so if they allow you to deliver that everybody's gonna be happy way better end result you know what i mean i think that that's what's that's the next wave coming in our industry i think uh you know and I, this is kind of a stretch but I think that there's a plenty good used market and with the performance bike thing being kind of like the king dingling right now. Yeah. There's plenty of good dinas, there's good soft tails out there, there's plenty of, you know, M8 baggers. I don't know how many how many people are going to be like ready to drop 50 plus thousand dollars on a CVO or the new Yeah. Uh, here's a leak. Uh <laughs> CVO ST. Right. Uh things like that. Um, fuck, I just probably run Harley right there. Um, <laughs> my Harley deal, the, the money trucks backing up. Um, so with all those things that are going on with, with that, I think that people are going to be looking like, like consider this, even though like, I know that I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell my bike for 30 grand and I wouldn't build it for 30 grand. Right. But there's versions of that that I think can be yeah. done for 30 grand. Right. And I think that for somebody that maybe already has a bagger, but they want a new bike that they can you know keep the bagger or keep the st or keep the dyna but let's do another bike and let's put some time in it you can spend 30 grand over the course of x amount of months customizing this you know adding these parts doing this bam and then now you have a custom bike something like i think that's the next wave people keep asking what's the next wave i'm yeah. like the next wave is we have to learn how to be those shops that used to do that because right. that's not been our world anymore right and that's why honestly like it's easy and like in the in the, the 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 scene, right? You see a guy, he gets a bike, he gets all the cool stuff, he thinks like it's gonna change his world, he sells the bike, you never see him again. Yeah. Boom. That goes away. Yeah. Because all of a sudden it's like, okay, do you have a year to hang out and really like wait for this thing to come? Versus instant credit card out of pocket, boom, website, boom, they're delivered on Monday, boom, you're riding Friday, you're there at the weekend. That's Boom. what that's what you those know, other like, bikes are for, though. Right. That's what the baggers for. That's right. what the the STs for. Um, but like, like building something like this that you have a different connection to. Like, I I, I don't know the words yet. I, I don't know the words to exploit the feeling of riding that that FXR because it's not as comfortable as the ST yeah, or no. the bagger. Yeah. But whenever I walk in the garage, I'm like, fuck. I want to. I was gonna this say because it's not supposed to be comfortable. It's not. It's supposed to be like a. a a thing that you enjoy at the time and then like you're done with it like yeah. not done with it forever but just like it does that thing and then you just you kind of get off of it i feel that's you know, how kind of i feel about mine like i'll always love that I, dude i have it in my office it's like it's it's on like a pedestal and like on its own bike show in my office yeah. at all times you know what i'm saying i'll take it out and i'll ride it every now and then 
But like to do what we just did, I'll never do that on that bike again because that's yeah. not why I, you know, I knew we were building it for a show. So I had to build more of a show bike, like real fancy stuff, mm -hmm. not really worried about like the ergonomics of everything. So yeah, if it's uncomfortable, then that means you actually probably built it to like look at, not sit on. You yeah. know what I mean? I would say that like the, uh, obviously doing the tour, I guess we could talk about that some. Um, yeah. <laughs> you we know, always do this. We always get like deep in these conversations. Yeah. It's already 632. But um, yeah. So like tour. the tour aspect, it's like, there's a lot of things I think Justin and I both went into it with like these staunch like things that like when you experienced it on the tour, it was easily like agreed upon between the both of us like yeah that that was a dumb rule not a dumb rule but like a like well, i mean it was new you had to so work all the th kings. this is the main thing and I, I think i've talked about this already before but you know when you get on the tour and we all showed up there in durango and you see all the bikes and that first night we're all that we're was, all walking around it was kind of like a that was amazing it was it was a high right yeah, that was amazing dude <laughs> and you know the next day uh you know we get on the road and we're we're it, it was a hard day yeah um, you know, it was a hard day. I, I had, I had wobble issues out the ass. So every Literally, time I got out close the <laughs> out the ass, every time I got up to 75, 80 miles an hour, I'm just fucking gnarly. Right. And it, it was hard to say because sometimes it would be normal and in certain areas it would be just violent. Right. Yeah. Um, it was just hard. And some of those, some of the other guys with the inmates and, and stuff like that was a little harder to keep up with. Yeah. But but that was oh, the, that was the fun about it is everybody brought like it's like this it's like you guys announced like a dance like we're going mm -hmm. to a party right but there's no there was like a hey you have to show up at this time some people were break dancing yeah you have to bring yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> it's like you have to bring a date you have to bring a dish and you have to you know we're, this is what we're yeah. doing like you said somebody's break dancing somebody's over here there's salsa dancing this dude's line dancing yeah but like that was why I felt it was gonna be so cool because. It was, you know, 10 people that were totally different from each other. And I knew, like, as the bikes were giving, I already knew, like, Justin was going to do an M8. I already knew Corey was going to do an M8. Yeah. It, didn't de it didn't deter me from doing a shovel head. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And I already knew, like, well, I think that, that the, I wasn't Because the gonna... premise was not about, like, building a bike to beat the other guy. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, and So I think that's the bike. one thing that still, like, the outside people looking in don't understand about it. They, they think that, you know, one of the comments was it was a dick measuring contest. contest. And it doesn't make any sense because we didn't have anything to measure up against. Nothing. It was None just, of us were competing against each right. other. Right. You were literally like, you were just competing against yourself. Like, you have a deadline, you have a task, and you know, like, if you show up and, you know, no offense, if your shit's weak, people are going to look at it. They, yeah. they might not comment too brutal on you. Of course, they're going to yeah. make a comment. But, like, we all knew we were had to be at a certain level, of course. Like, you're not yeah. going to show up clapped out, right, and be yeah. like, oh, well, I made the tour. No, that's not what that was. So, like, to compete against each other wasn't it. It was just, like, compete against yourself. Can you do this? Like, can you make it and have a, a good quality product that it will stand up against the next guys? Not not to compete, but, like, could be there. Is it, mm -hmm. is it like, worthy of being in the same lineup? Yeah. You know what I mean? Not, oh, who's the fastest or who's got the most money? It's like, no, like, look at your attention to detail. Like, how creative did you get? Like, where where's where are you pushing the boundary on on things like yeah that on, on that and yourself right yeah. that's where that was not yeah. like oh well you know who has the best paint you know who has the fanciest wheels like yeah. it's see not. that's that's what I think that like our audience uh, for the most part a lot of the audience was people coming out of the performance bagger world which means that they haven't really been around for a long time right and I, I don't mean that as a dig at all it's just like if you found if performance baggers inspired you getting Harley's and now you're watching this FXR tour like. There's just a lot. There's there's a there's a lot of premise there that Justin and I put in place to to bring the feels of what it's what what's good about like this world, like the group chat yeah. or the camaraderie everybody had instead of the competition. The competition right. is what brings out the worst in everybody. And like I said, uh, you know, leading up to it, I think the most amazing thing if if there was like a a real world. Yeah. If it was like the real world, but we're all staying in the same house and we're somehow dealing with all the same, the home front, the shop front, yeah. like what Clem was going through the yeah. last couple of weeks leading up right. to his, his build when he had the, the, the crank issue right. and he had to get that resolved. On like top of the personal family stuff and his, all the other his, stuff. His just, animals passed. Yeah, just all kinds of crazy. Like this, that's the thing is like 
the 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 tour, the concept, the builds, the builders, the experiences we did. That's not for everybody. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and and that's okay. It doesn't need to be. But when you, I, I mean, I'm speaking for myself. So when I feel so passionate about like not just this platform, but like a, the experience, the the camaraderie, the friendships, like mm-hmm. there were real friendships made to where like I'm talking to people I never imagined I would even yeah they would acknowledge me you know what i mean like and there we're outside of like a hotel in a random spot with these amazing bikes in a beautiful lineup yeah and nobody cares we're not even looking at it i mean we looked at them the first day second day you you know while we're riding next to each other but like we get to the spot we're hanging out we're partying nobody cares about the bike we're literally yeah. just locked eyes drinking a beer smoking a cigarette whatever talking about not even bikes we're talking about like crazy other stuff like yeah. have nothing to do with motorcycles so it's just like i get that that's not for everybody the performance bagger dude like you say who just came up in it he wants to go to a bike show and stand around and like point to stuff on his bike that's for him but that's not for me you know what yeah. i mean just like they say there's an ass for every seat we don't have to be everything for everybody just live your life ride your lane you know what i mean like yeah. and make the best of it and i feel like that's what the tour was was just like all these random people doing random stuff together mm-hmm. that was the, the the premise and i felt like going through the experience when i came back i felt like i was like on like a dopamine low like i felt like i did yeah. molly and Post just part came of down yeah like oh i did molly I was, I was dude i was at a rave it was the best i'm i'm up here and then like the next day when i wake up i'm like it's over i just, I just want to die <laughs> like this is terrible like what happened even like walking around the shop i'm like moseying around i'm like can't find the motivation to do anything because there's no you know for that whole year at that shop i had like this unbelievable pressure excitement like this goal like bigger than the shop i felt like because i wanted to do this and then so like i'm excited to see the future of it to watch it go down and just it's going to excite a lot more people even the people that maybe not like our builders or whatever because i know it inspired people who weren't on the main you know, the card, I guess you'd call yeah. the main card. They were still out there in the parking lot fighting, though. They didn't care. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> I think that's one of the things that, you know, uh, I know Justin, I know I know Justin's been dealing with it. I, I know for sure I'm dealing with it. And since we've told everybody that every other builder is picking their, I know that other builders are getting kind of like, hey, man, I really like yeah. your bike. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're trying to, like, yeah. pass favor. But maybe, obviously, we've already passed on the tour, but – all these people out there that are waiting for an invitation to go do something badass, like just you could have came, yeah, you could have built it, it and right. just showed up because right. a lot of people did, and that's what I'm saying. And some of those people were like, and some of those people are going to be the people that gets picked for probably, next year, yeah, because those they dudes were a good time up. too. Yeah, those dudes were a good time. Like, um, what's his name, Nick, the dude who travels. Oh yeah, yeah. And the other dude, um, damn, I can't think of his name. The other dude who travels, they didn't care anything about building the craziest bike. Their bike is, in my opinion, the craziest bike. It's yeah. taken them for the last four or five years they were living on this thing. But they heard about it. They came, partied. Everybody else could have died. If those dudes can make it, yeah. you can make it. Like I just I feel like people, you know, they if you put all your eggs in one basket, like I'm gonna build one bike and this one bike's gonna define my brand forever and I'm gonna yeah, no. it doesn't work that way. Like, you know, if you can just you know, he had made a comment about like how much stuff was in here in this podcast room. This yeah. was acquired over the course of, you know, Jan- January would be six years we've done this podcast. Yeah. Uh, of investing into it. Well, I'm not saying you need to invest into your FXR build for six years, but if you can like build a version of that in one year right. and then come out and and show it to the world, not just Instagram, right? Show it like go places, right? Enjoy what you say then, you enjoy you can make the relationships and it's a lot easier to get invited to be a part of things when people know what you who you are online and in real life and that's that's the one thing that i feel like the future gen, the the coming up generations of our motorcycle industry are not understanding about growing yourself it's like it's not all about social media it's yeah. about the human experience as well and you know don't get me wrong like you can make a lot of money just sit, sitting on on social media but then if you want to have this, if you want to taste this pie over here, right. you got to show up for it. Yeah. I mean, that's how we met. I mean, I know I've said it a million times, but literally showed up in the middle of the night in the middle of the woods to meet a bunch of dudes I've never met before. And we all took our shirts off. And we all took our shirts off. <laughs> and here we are, what, five something years yeah. later. And 
That's crazy. Like, it's just it's it's this about, whole thing's been crazy. Yeah, yeah. I've, dude, it's. And I think that mine's kind of spread out a little bit, so it doesn't. I mean, it it always feels surreal, like, but at the same time, it's it's spread out enough to where it's palatable, if you will. Yeah, palatable in a way that it doesn't like overwhelm me. Like with, I'm very much overwhelmed. I'm, I yeah. feel like I'm always overwhelmed. Though. I'm just like a kind of anxious person anyway. So yeah. like everything's kind of like a lot for me. You know, yeah. it might not feel like it or seem like it because you might see me just hanging out, but like. I'm always like, holy God, this is a lot. Like, even at Born Free, when we got there, and I'm just, like, sitting down. I might look like I was chilling, and, like, I was just trying to, like, calm the fuck down. Because like, yeah. it's just so much. Like, it's just, even, like, the tour, dude, that tour was a lot, too. It was, like, I'm in places I've never been with people I've never been with, doing something I love. So I'm finding comfort in riding and being around bikes and stuff, but. Yeah, e- like I said, even if you're not going to be a part of like the main card, show up. It's it's an amazing experience. Like mm-hmm. you, you're going to meet people you've never met before that you couldn't imagine you're going to meet. You're going to have conversations you've been wanting to have forever. You're going to find that like the road does really provide. Yeah, you know, like all the things you've talked about and everybody talks about riding and oh yeah, the road provides. And you're going to meet people. That's like for real. Yeah, but it's super concentrated on the tour because mm-hmm. like. The majority of the bikes, yeah, they're FXRs. So if you like FXRs and you're not there, you should definitely be there. Like yeah. the jams, from what I understand, those are really cool. I'm yet to go to one. I'm definitely gonna go. But I felt like this is probably a little bit different. It's taking the same it's not concept. To, well, it's the, I'll tell you exactly what it is. Like the jam is a catch-all be-all. Yeah, it's and, like a and I don't mean that as yeah, a yeah, yeah. Uh, as a bad way. That's like if you're into this frame, right. period. Show up, and that's all it's about. These frames brought us together. It doesn't matter how much you got in your frame versus mine. Yeah. And and I've been to the East Coast Jam when it was in Maggie Valley, and it, it's it's a vibe, and I love it. And I plan to do the Triple Crown this year yeah. coming up. So my thing is, like, that is dope. But this is not that. It's not trying to be that. Right. And it may not even be trying to attract the same people that are interested in right. that. And that's what I was saying was, like, <clears throat> that's its own thing. You know what I mean? This might not be for you, just like that might not be for the people that get involved with the tour. Mm-hmm. But the concept is the same. You have a passion for a certain bike or a certain lifestyle. You want to experience certain things. Go yeah. for it. And there's nothing to say about anybody else's events that, oh, because this is a dick measuring contest or whatever. Like, no, no, no. This, mm. It's all supposed to be, like I said, a passion for a motorcycle for the certain experience to do a certain lifestyle. That's it. That's it just it. so happens to be around an FXR because that's what you know we wanted to do. Yeah, obviously, like we're not gonna have a soft tail tour, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. no offense, soft tails, but they're not. You know, I don't think you could do this with a different platform. Yeah, I, you know, we've talked about that before. It's it's just kind of hard to do that when the barrier of entry to most other bikes. You know, yeah, you could do like a twin cam or Evo soft tail, yeah. but. There's no real draw to those bikes as far as customizing them, and and there's no counterculture to that, if you will, yeah. versus, like, if we were to say, okay, next year, like, the whole skinny tire bagger thing was, yeah. is a good vibe. That was cool. That's right. a good idea right, because right. it's, like, affordable baggers you can pick up to and do then for a show. kind of take right. it to wherever you want to go, right. right? But then, you know, it's kind of like it's, like, nobody's – looking to ever buy a skinny tire bagger no yeah, matter how much money that, they're putting well into that it. and there's no risk in riding those things in yeah. my opinion like okay. you, you know like that was the biggest draw like we all joked about like who's gonna break down yeah because of the fxr like it had nothing to do with anything other ironically than... it was me the entire time. <laughs> 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 but like you know the the stigma with that that model is like it's gonna break down it's gonna leak so like that made it even more fun versus yeah. like all right, who can buy like the most fancy? Like, no, no, no. Like, we're not yeah. starting with dependable bikes. You well, know, like- I, w- I do want to kind of chime on like my because you know we put the YouTube video out and it kind of it kind of skimmed over a little bit of what took place uh, when we left uh, Alpine. You know, to chime in on the video we posted up, which is doing pretty well. So thank you all that's watching the video on uh, on YouTube. It's kind of like the first video we put out of actually riding anywhere, and I, I hate. Liked it. I hate that it was all done on a GoPro because I hate the way GoPros look, but they serve a purpose. The smoothness of riding. If I was doing that with my big camera while we were riding, it just been shaking everywhere. It would have been horrible video footage. But um, going on these trips, like, you know, to chime in on the YouTube real quick, uh, going on all these trips I've done this year, the hardest part is you start the trip off enthusiastic about capturing everything and 
adding commentary to what you're doing. And then by the end of the trip, you might have missed one night where you just kind of got lost in like the experience of doing something. So you didn't say anything or, right. or pull it out. And you feel like you've failed at the whole video because you skipped some things that would have been great footage, but you were actually living it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like the, that's are you at the concert it. or are you at the concert? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's my problem. We talked a little bit about like, you're like, oh, you're doing anything with your YouTube? I was like, eh, not really. Like all I'm literally doing is I don't even like take multiple videos. It's just like I hit record. I did that one in Galveston, mm -hmm. right? Just walked around and sent it. That was it. Like yeah. I don't know how to polish you know, video and edit and like, I don't want to, like, that's not my thing. Like, I feel like my style is a little bit more raw, I guess. Yeah. So I don't know how you do it. Like, cause I, like even on the tour, I even told myself, I was like, man, I'm going to record some stuff. Like this is gonna be yeah. really good. I'm gonna capture this and this. Like, nope. I look back, dude, I had barely ever had, like had dude, photos. Same. Barely it was anything. so like, just like a badass experience. Like yeah. it was just crazy. It was amazing. You need a like, camera, you need a camera crew. Right. They're not, that we, way you can be luckily sax was there yeah. man i'll tell you what he captured a lot but living it was even yeah more yeah, that's the point i think you have to live it like it, it if i was there having to do all the it's your boy shit you yeah know what I mean? <laughs> it would have been shit. it would have been hard you know what i mean yeah. but so we left uh you know all right so problems on the bike this is what it was if you saw the video then what happened on the video was uh one of the homies from New York told me when, when I showed the picture for one of my FXR uh, Friday, FXR tour post for Friday was a picture of the motor mount that, that, that Corey had a, like adjusted to level out the twin cam in my yeah. bike. One of the homies reached out and said, hey, look, if you don't gusset at that, those are prone to broke, break when you do that. Right. So Corey gusseted it. Now the gussets were a little bit too big for the travel that we needed on the motor for it to be in the frame. So it was tapping the top of that frame uh mount spot on in between the uh, down tubes and it sounded the same way it sounds like if you're riding and you hit the brake and you hear the click in the neck oh yeah yeah you know like your neck's too loose right it sounded like that so once we figured out that it was the you didn't feel it like in your like yeah in your mouth yeah, like a, yeah dude, that yeah i've had one like blow out like that and i was riding it <clears throat> it's my pink fxr god it's brutal you can feel Every, it literally feels like the bike's falling apart. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of, it's nerve wracking, especially as you're embarking on a almost 2000 mile ride. Right. And so we figured out what it was. We solved the problem. Now here's what happened. We're in the Harbor Freight parking lot. And in the video, I mentioned that it started to kind of tap on the wires and crimp the wires for the, uh, the rectifier. Regular. Yeah. So. What we did was, and mind you, I have a 2014 motor and the 2014 wires to go into it. So the, the rectifier plugs are like this fucking big. Yeah. And it's ru like thick rubber. So to bend it, it's like putting a strain on all that shit in there. So yeah. we ran that wire on the top side of the motor mount this time. Yeah, so it that's had right a, where that uh, FXR frame adjuster goes, yeah, right? Yeah, across that. Yeah. And then into that plug. And so the plug was super fucking bent, right? So the actual rubber plug right. wire is like super bent. So what happened was we leave San, San Angelo, we make it to Alpine, we party in Alpine, we go down to Big Ben, do all the stuff in Big Ben, make it home that night, which I'm so glad we made it home that night. Yeah, that's not a good place uh, to break down. And then the next morning we go out there, I try to start the bike and it's click, click, click. Right. Not even click. It's just dead. So right? it wasn't even. Tr so you basically were riding on battery power. I was riding on battery power, hundred yeah. percent. Now what would happen was it hadn't broken so much, it was just it broke enough to where it wasn't recharging the battery. Right. So we we uh, we assumed uh, we didn't know what to assume at first. So we go to our AutoZone. Um, they have a a voltmeter. We just use it. We test it. Um, we plug. We turn the bike on after we bought a new battery. And it's charging at 14 plus volts. Everything's looking right, right? So it's intermittent. Yes. When we're Ooh, sitting still. Those are the worst ones. Yeah, we're sitting still in a parking lot with it just turned on. Those those broken right. prongs are touching in right. the plug, charging the battery. As soon as you put a load on it, you start going down the road. Wind, vibration. Yeah, it separates that thing and yeah. it causes the battery to... Plus the load of you riding. Exactly. Yeah. So now... 
Uh, we leave there, uh, and crazy enough, we actually got quite a bit of distance on that first battery before it took a shit, right? So I'm like, okay, well, fuck. All right, so that first, so that battery that we bought in Alpine, we made it all the way to Carlsbad, New Mexico, before I went to go back to start it. We were at All Subs, had to get a burrito, <laughs> went back to start it, and it didn't quick, work. Quick. So we're like, fuck. So we, uh, what's the next town north of Carls- Carlsbad? Artesia? Artesia. Artesia. And then it's, no, Roswell. we were in, we were in Artesia. Tegia, however you say that. Artesia. Roswell had like, Roswell had everything, right? So they had, you know, Harbor Freight. They had uh, AutoZone, all that stuff. So Connor brought a, 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 a jump box. So we jumped it off again and we made it, what was it like 30 or 40 miles yeah. To Roswell or something like that. And it shuts off. We're fine. Oh, you're We're fine. good. Oh, shit. Uh, but just in case, we go and we buy a little cheap ass Harbor Freight, um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, voltmeter. We test it again. It's not really charging at all. So I was like, all right, well, let me go buy another battery from AutoZone and we'll just take it with us. Let's hope we should be able to get to, if it's anything like today, we should be able to get to uh, Albuquerque. Yeah. So we get back on the road, 30 miles down the road, bam, fucking first battery is done. Yeah, so we take about, it out. Yeah, you got about 30 miles. So this time I'm like, oh shit, we got, and from Roswell to Vaughn, or actually Albuquerque was, I think Vaughn was our next gas stop. It was going to be, so from Artesia to Vaughn was like 138 miles, 140 miles. And that's ballsy. Well, I, I've been getting 140 <laughs> yeah, out, of the, yeah. out of the tank, so I was good. But like I said, we put that second battery in and I made it another, um, I think this is what kind of broke my, uh, my, I was in a, I was in a vibe, a mood. Like I was, I was lost, right? Because nothing had been consistent and the inconsistency was giving me such an awkward feeling of like, how's this working? Like. I, I, I realize that there's a problem with the charging, but I don't understand it because it's not consistent. <clears throat> That's the worst part when yeah. you're chasing the ghost. So just moving the moving the needle every time. We put the new battery in there. I I'm I'm thinking about all the things in the world that I want to do, and then battery just dies. Bike side of the road, uh, five miles from uh, Vaughn, and I'm like, fuck. So immediately I'm rushed with like all these things. Like, what the hell could it be? What could it be? And, um, you like literally when you text me or called me was, I was pulling the helmet off. Like yeah. I just stopped and I had no idea what was going on. Um, put it out filler out there on Instagram. And as we've said before in, in a post and on, on YouTube, uh, Scott from New Mexico, uh, I think what's the page that he's part of the New Mexico, New, New Mexico performance Harleys. Yeah. So all those guys up there, uh, Scott reached out and I didn't know, I, I didn't follow him. I didn't know him like right. personally ended up becoming a, like I wouldn't change this. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. I would deal with that day of batteries <laughs> and fucking up and uncertainty and everything that came with it for the opportunity to meet this man and his wife again, straight up. Like I wouldn't change any of That's that. Tight. And Hanging out in his garage, like I know we barely got footage on that video, but it was it just cool. it was a vibe. It you looked know? like it. So what it reminded it's, me of was um what's that movie? Thirty Days Under the Sun or Twenty Oh, Twenty One Days. Twenty One yeah. Days in the Sun when they are like fixing that dude's frame. Yeah. That's what that yeah. dude, I went to that place immediately because I always watched that that movie before I hit the road. Yeah. And I, I watched it. it right before the tour. And then when you did that and you posted, I was like, Oh, that's what he went through. That's man. what it was like, man. Yeah. I mean he he has a few FXRs, and then he had a Road King, a 2010 Road King, which is the exact same wire harness that I would need, uh, you know, for the motor. I mean, the CAN right. bus on the other right. shit, right? But, yeah, and he just said what it ended up being was, uh, like I said, so we, we pull the primary off, pull the stator out. I'm looking at the stator. It looks good. It smells fine, which yeah. is hardly the diagnostics, if you yeah. will. And I'm like, fuck, man, this is throwing me for a loop. And then – Joey pulls out his primary and his stator, and it looks the same and smells the same. Damn. So I'm like, so y'all man, disassembled two bikes. Yes. Jesus. Just to make get time done because we didn't yeah, get yeah. to his house till t- ten o'clock at night. Jesus. So we're uh, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, what the fuck? But at the same time, 
I was going to cut the rectifier wire and re-pull it out of the frame to check and see if something was fucked up inside that wire, right? So whenever I unplugged it and then I cut the wire, yeah, I cut the wire off and I was about to pull it through the frame is when I found that the plug was was broken. After I'd already pulled this primary apart, he pulled that primary Jeez. apart. Everything's fucked. Dude, so when I travel, I take a piece that Wayne made me. It's a plug off of a regulator that has the plug side with the two wires. And in case something happens so you don't have to do that, I can plug this into the stator and I can put my voltmeter on it to independently test the stator versus the regulator so mm. you don't have to do that. And I, not only do I take that with me, but I use that shit in the shop on everybody's bike. Yeah, that's not, that's not a bad idea. So you, so you plug easier. it into the rectifier. No, you plug it into the stator. So the stator's three wires coming out of it, some of the newer ones. Yeah, depending on what you have. So yeah. I, obviously FXR, you yeah. know, that's what I travel with. So I just plug that in. You can also take your voltmeter and ohm that shit out, and it'll tell you immediately. Is it, like, bad ground? Is it, like, smoked? Turn the bike on, boom. Ooh, nothing. All right, yeah, you're, you're yeah. fucked. Because the last thing I want to do, like with a shop, is like tear somebody's primary part, time, labor, parts, right? And be like, oh shit, it's good, never mind. And then, like, oh damn, it's a plug. Like, that's what the one thing, like, so having just, a shop has shown me is like how to isolate problems. You know? Every every shakedown I've ever had yeah. of, an, of a major bike has been primary related issues. Primary meaning like something that's going on in the primary. It's never been a tranny, never been a motor, never been anything else but what's in my first FXR on the side of the road because of a primary issue. Yeah leading out going to san francisco and this was no different and then you know like like to but once you're like in the vibe it kind of messes with you and you kind of scramble and panic and all these different i'm sure there's different cooks in the kitchen giving you different opinions that was kind of what was going on too and and i love joey to death but he kind of was putting a lot of things in my head that was kind of making me doubt my process if you will yeah um it happens and you know like i mean he's he he's a mechanic he he understands stuff he he could recite the 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 fucking you know, FXR, you know, all, all the, the, what do you call them? The um, torque specs, torque specs, but the whole manual, he can, yeah. he can recite it to you. Right. And so I, it was helpful, you know, but at the same time, like when you're on the road, like none of that shit matters. Right. You know what I mean? None of the, the torque specs don't all that goes fucking the matter. Yeah, you know, yeah, you just have one issue and you're solve the problem. Yeah. You get especially back on the after road. being on the road, you're just, you're, you know, you go from a very comfortable state to a panic state very quickly. Well, the, the now scare, you want to just get the hell out of there, you know, like the scare for me was like, OK, well. Am I going to get is this going to work? Because at the time, like I was still like, I don't want to break down the tour. I was going to say you didn't even start the tour at that. I mean, well, you started your own tour. Yeah. But like you didn't even start the tour. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. I also, I had a very crazy scare on mine the day before I left. Yeah, too. That's right. Yeah. That was like. I damn near put me in tears. Like, so I was riding the bike, test riding it. I put like 150, almost 200 something miles on it with my buddies. We're all riding, going to the bar, we're hanging out, eating burgers. We're, we're shooting around the whole hill country, dude. Perfect. Everything's smooth as could be. I had to do one clutch adjustment in the parking lot. So I had Wayne do it while I was inside drinking a beer. Came out perfect, right? Man, everybody went home. I'm riding the bike, trying to go home, leaving the shop. And I like start to hear this thing like one lung in. So I'm like, oh shoot, maybe I blew a plug. You know, it's the the plugs that the motor came with. So I was like, ah, maybe, you know, whatever. Let me pull off real quick at like a auto parts store and buy two plugs. Man, I get off the bike and I just look at the bike and I'm like, oh, all right. And, but I'm looking down. As soon as I look down, there's oil fucking everywhere, dude. The whole side of the bike's covered. My side of me is covered. My back's covered. My helmet's covered. Everything's covered in oil. Only thing missing, my oil filter. Gone, dude. Yeah. So probably for, I, I think I calculated it's like six something, almost seven miles. Straight dumping oil out and sucking air in. No filter. Just, oh my God, I was so disgusted, dude. So I go into like a full panic mode, but I still see like oil dripping. So I'm like, okay, there's probably still some oil in it. Just just relax. Yeah. So I go inside, buy a filter, buy some oil. And right behind me was James um, Speed Demon on Instagram with a truck and a trailer because he had just dropped off his bike to my shop. Nice. And I was like, oh, shit. But his bike was there. No, he was picking it up. That's right. He just picked it up. So he he had his bike. We took his bike out. I was like, man, I could put oil in it. I could put the oil filter. I can run it. But I was like, 
full panic mode. So I fucked that, took his bike off, put mine on the trailer, got it back to the shop, and I thought the motor was toast because we scoped it and like the angle of the camera that I was scoping with, it looked like one of the pistons was like in half. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like I was panicking, panicking. I was shaking, dude. I was so, oh my God. Every motion you could think of was bad. And we put fresh oil in it, cycled it, pulled the plug, no metal on the fucking magnet, scoped both cylinders again, rotated it, fired it up. Perfect. Solid. I was like, I remember when you (laughs) you had messaged me. I think you messaged me. I messaged the whole group chat. I was calling, dude. Dude, I was calling. The, the priest like <laughs> say a prayer dude like this yeah. is not good like eight nine thousand dollar motor a day before we leave during the test ride fucked and i was like no 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 there's no i do i call my wife my wife's like speechless i was like it's done it's over I babe like, yeah i was like i'm done it's like i'm not gonna make it she's like what happened i was like motor's fucked she's like that's all you heard and it's just quiet <laughs> She don't even know what it is, but she just knows. Like, if I call her, yeah. it's like, damn, dude. Like, she can't even help me, but it's, like, a problem. Yeah, it was wild. So, yeah, my tour almost ended just like yours did before the tour started. <laughs> well, yeah, so that's that's kind of why, like, the emotions were so kind of, uh, like, all over the place. I mean, it, w- it was just hard to, you know, um, I mean, it's hard to, like, really, like, we spent all this time. And not, not that and it like, like Matt. Okay, let's just say you know. Let's just say we didn't fucking. I didn't. You know, it, it's not gonna. Bl- like, I'm not a bike builder, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't fucking affect me the same way. It doesn't affect but anything. Your emotions but, were in it. Like, yeah, it's, all this time you put in it, and then like you're right. I there wanted to line. have that experience with right. everybody else. I, right. I, it was more so. Like I said, it was. Okay, the knife, right? The knives, you know, that we we had done were a significant 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 thing that we wanted to have done for people so that it you can remember that experience yeah. through that knife that's hanging on your belt loop or on your wall or yeah, wherever you want to do wall, it. dude i took time i took a brass plate i cut it i vintaged it polished it hand stamped it to say like fxr tour 2023 yeah. and like put it on there and glued it in the shadow box i was like yeah that's what i'm saying like that that is a, a way to like uh it's something that you're, you know, for for people that are going to use it, like it's something that every time they pull it out, they're right. going to remember, right? It's like a wedding ring. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I didn't already have like a really badass, you know, yeah, knife, I guess we'll go fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I would have like rocked it. But like, yeah. to me, like, I'll lose this one. This is cool. Like, I'll lose it. No problem. I won't even feel bad. Yeah. Knock on wood. Hopefully I don't. But if I lost that one, I'd feel like dog shit. Break the glass. Yeah. I'd, I'd be Pull bad. that one out. Yeah. But so, you know, y- that was the concept of like I wanted to, you know, have this experience the same way that everybody else is going to have it. But I mean, like I said, I wouldn't change any of it in hindsight. Now sitting back here, once the bike got fixed, we made it to Durango the next day. Um, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah. Right now, my bike's the only bike that had to go on a trailer, right, on the tour. And I'll tell you what happened. Like we left uh, Amarillo. Amarillo. Uh, we are all, we're all kind of together. I think at this time, that was like a windy, wild yeah. ride, dude. So what's his name? Put his on the trailer. Oh, uh, almost, Ashley. Yeah. He almost went sideways like multiple times cause he's not used to it. You know, yeah, it's he's understandable. Right. Yeah. I don't think anybody else. Can the wind really was pretty fucking gnarly. It. it was gnarly. Dude. Yeah. Like very, like I seen, um, uh, Justin and, in, in, uh, Paul's trailer, like being pushed over. And I was like. Oh shit! Like, the faster you go, the you know, the faster the wind gets. So I was just like, I kept just buckling back, but I tried, you know, for a while to keep up and stay with you guys. And then, you know, yours is going everywhere. Everybody was everywhere. I was just like, oh, this is gonna be crazy. So we, as soon as we get on two eighty seven, we're heading south towards Dallas, and then uh, before the the first gas stop, which wasn't a long gas stop of a day, it was like the first gas stop was like supposed to be like sixty miles. That's all I had. (laughs) Yeah, I was only getting sixty. Yeah. Miles to the tank, yeah. And so what ended up happening was, same thing, another weird thing that didn't make any sense. Like, my bike just died. Yeah, it was right next to you, and I just, like... So I pulled over. We're, we're cruising, but it's, like, shooting fire. Like, it was weird. Yeah, it was, it was like, like popping. Pop, 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 pop. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, what the fuck, man? That's yeah. what I'm thinking in my head. It's like, what the fuck, dude? <clears throat> All over Why? Again. Yeah. And, and so I pull over, and, you know, I'm thinking, like, uh, you know, as soon as it happens, like you're thinking of every possible thing you can think of that could be wrong with the bike as you're pulling over. 
And mind you, my wire harness is like simple. Simple. There's chopper style. Th- there's no wires like anywhere, yeah. which doesn't help. <laughs> right. Because I'm it never worried about it. I'm never worried about the handlebar switches right. like I'm thinking about it. It's like yeah. no, it's like these ma- th- these wires still are the ones that are making it. So what ended up happening on this situation? I think because right. what I went away, solved, right? it's never happened again. Right. So I have breakers instead of yeah. a, a instead of a fuse box. So my breakers, I have a main breaker that's for starting the bike, and then I have an accessory breaker. Yeah. Well, somehow I guess over time, the main breakers bottom break uh, bottom uh, post wire like rotated up and finally like was touching, touching. but there was uh, there was. Out. There was, you know, stuff in between it, but I think that it was starting to kind of get to the point where it was arcing through. Yeah. And that makes sense why the flames. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. But so this is where I'm at, right? So this is why I decided fuck it, throw it on the trailer. It's because there's 20 bikes well, yeah. on the side of and 287. And we can barely help you. We're holding our bikes because of the wind. Yeah, Everybody's people can't even like over. get off their bikes because the wind's going to knock yeah. it over. You got 18 wheels like they're fucking about to oh, fall yeah. over on you. Yeah. And so I'm like, man, just throw on the trailer. Let's get to the gas station. Yeah, and once they once they rode by and they stopped, it was like. Then we took off the second time and it happened again. Second time happened again. Yeah. And then once once the trailer's there, it's like because they're gonna keep going. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to you have to know when to like throw the towel. Yeah. So to speak, and be like, I need a break. This, yeah. This is we're not gonna fix this here. It's not fixed. I'm not gonna keep doing this. Like and the other the other problem that I didn't have, uh, I didn't. I thought I did, but I did not pack a five sixteenths twelve point which is the main bolt on my entire bike. I had the ratchet, but in those side covers, they are yeah. the recessed, so I had to have a deep uh, bolt. Yeah, I had a I had a uh, wrench, a yeah. ratchet wrench, but yeah, I didn't a have socket. a socket, right? Yeah. So, when we got to Stroker's, I immediately took it back there, pulled off that side cover, saw it, pulled it off, said surely that can't be the problem. <laughs> Swapped the battery out, fourth battery on this trip. Right. Started it right up. Been riding ever since. Not yeah, that's what you told me. I was like, perfect. Don't even worry yeah. about it. Keep going. Yeah. That's so, cool. to be honest with you, like, uh, and I, I think I said it already before, but, you know, I I was talking to Justin that day, but I didn't want to say it to Justin, right? Because I, I think because I was thinking about it before we actually left Amarillo, but then when my bike broke down, I was like, if I bring this up to Justin, it's going to be, I'm going to, it's going to sound like I'm thinking about it for myself. Yeah. But what I was thinking about was, you know, Clem, Clem pulled his bike out in Durango, and this is a twenty thousand dollar motor, built to the nines, tuned, and he started it, and it something didn't seem right. And he he thought like, it was a tune. Yeah, but he knew immediately. He's like, "We're not doing this. He's not riding that bike." Nope. He's know? like, "I'm not going to start it again until I take it back to." The, and that was smart. Yeah, you know, because at the end of the day, yes, you you know, we are trying to accomplish this goal, but you can't be. You know, you can't be fooling around. Like can't if, be foolish, right, right? For a knife, right? Especially at, at where he's at with what that bike is supposed to do when yeah. he's done with this. Like, yeah, take a break, bro. It's okay. The fact that he still showed up with that right. bike, he still brought another FXR that fucking ran like a like a motherfucker. You know, no no fairing on it. By the way, <sighs> that was the worst. That dude was just like fucking taking life, like everything. I that think, the, I think a, a lot of us were with the no fairing. Yeah. Yeah, and so now you got um so now you got that then you know the the bare knuckle paul situation where he literally spent probably what he told me is probably more than what we all spent on our bikes not collectively but right, right. individually uh on overnight shipping trying yeah. to get everything solved and for this bike to be done and he's, at least he's still posting <laughs> he is still posting <laughs> he's still posting i texted him i was like hey man thanks for the update <laughs> so Basically, what was going through my head was like, man, you know, TBJ's problems, right? That was freak so, situation. Dude, that was so stupid. You know, and one rubber grommet cost him the entire trip. But see, this is the thing. This this is one thing that that bothers me. And I know that there are guys out there that are listening to this, and they're thinking in their heads like, oh man, like these guys and their problems on their bikes, like they just don't know how to build bikes. Like, calm down, calm down, calm down, T- champ. TPJ is not a guy that you calm can down. say does not to build a bike. Same with none Paul. Of, same none, with fucking Clem, any of these guys. None of them. I'm, I'm, me and you are probably the only two people I feel comfortable with somebody talking shit about. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah. say, hey, if my shit broke down, you have all rights to talk shit. No problem. TPJ shit breaks down. 
Eh, it's a freak accident, like you said. Yeah. He definitely knows what he's doing. I think that a lot of these people don't understand that, like, you know, if you're building a bike and you're supposed to you're building it for a customer, do you get to go put the first thousand miles on this bike when you build it for a customer? Do you get to do that? I do about five hundred. That's what I think is the best, right? Yeah. But because then, then I do the first old change. See you later. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's why you want to do it because right. I feel like the biggest problems you're going to have on a bike are in that first two hundred to five hundred thousand or five hundred miles, not five hundred thousand. Right. Yeah, that's a lot uh, of miles, dude. <laughs> uh, but you're going to have an issue there. Now you build a bike, you know, not like a bike. Like okay, I'm, I'm putting all these parts together, which I'm not trying to downplay that because yeah, but that's more safe. It's safer, it's safer right? You just got to make sure you, you you adjusted your push rods right. right. Uh, you make sure that all in. your is shit's the oil good. Pressure good is it returning in the tank? You can kind of like you're probably you can good. ship that thing. Yeah, you're but probably good. When you're melding all these different things together from that are not supposed to go together, right? Like something can work fine for 500 miles or a thousand mm-hmm. miles until it doesn't, right? Right, and those are the things that you find out on the road. And the thing is, that like that doesn't make me bad at what I do. You know what I mean? Because no, it doesn't. But it means that you were willing to take the risk to figure it out. Most people wouldn't have done that. They go the easy route. Yeah. I think that most people probably don't do things like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, most people that will get a bike built like that, they don't have the time to ride it, so they'll never fucking see 2,000 miles on the bike. Right. Um, Dude, I had, I, a there's crazy, so many... I had a crazy idea uh, this morning before I left. Speaking of like the tour, we should do like a tour reunion. Like in like five <laughs> or six years, like the original 10 dudes, we just like... Build another bike again. Just you just want to do it again. I just want to do it again, dude. I'm looking for any excuse, man. (laughs) It was, dude. I'm telling you, the the building of the bike was cool. The riding the bike was even better. But the experience of the whole thing, the concept, it's just, yeah, it was amazing. It really was. Well, and then what followed after that was really cool too. Like the Galveston thing and all the little opportunities that pop up are just like bonuses. You know what I mean? Well, so that's that is the the premise of like the. uh, I guess the results of what I was hoping to create is if you bring enough ten- attention to the the bikes that are being built and what's going on, um, then other opportunities start to come from it. Whether it's other build opportunities or other show opportunities or other other things, right? And so that's what you want to facilitate. Like, yeah, we don't have a purse at the end of this thing where each builder gets five grand, yeah. ten grand, whatever. It's like we don't have that. Like it's just not that. It's it's a reason to build a bike, or at least if it's it's a it's a passion project. It is That's right. All it is. But our job as the people that put on the tour is to create as much opportunity and exposure for you building the bike to hopefully create other opportunities outside of this. Right. Yeah. So maybe maybe you come to the table and you build a bike. That inspires people to want to have you build one for them, like like right. what's happened, or these other entities, these other shows see the bike that you build and they want it to be shown at their event, right. which might also bring more opportunities. Yeah, and it did too. That was, so yeah. that's the point of it is is to is to shine light on on things and hopefully garner more uh, attention. Yeah, yeah. I sold a bike last Saturday because of it. Mm-hmm. One of my personal bikes, like the dude had to, had to have it, like because he's seen it. He's seen it uh, at Fan, no, at Texas Hills at a different color. And then he didn't, you know, I told him it was for sale, but not that color. And then we repainted it and all this other stuff. But, like, he came on the tour and met us in Amarillo Mm -hmm. and then was like, yeah, we're really doing this deal. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, it's just crazy. But the experience is just, if, if I could do it all over again, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I probably will do it all over again. I want to, man. I, I'm, I'm trying to be responsible next year. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was a lot of work, and it has paid off. Yeah. Per, like, just as a personal project, like, within myself to be like, I can I can say I've done this. Like, Yeah. I mean, that's, that's it, man. Like, you want to make sure that, I don't know, man. Like, this, this whole con, like, the concept is not like nothing, nothing that, that, that Justin or I brought to the table is anything new. It's just, we right. stripped away all the things that make it not fun. Right. And, and that the, was what was the cool, like, so when I agreed to do it, I didn't know any of the details, but I just knew like you weren't going to do something I wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As far as like making it this fluffy kind of fake ish, you know, filler right mm-hmm. where there's all these things that like come with it i knew you were just going to be like 
just like when we rode to Sturgis. You're just like, hey, we're going to Sturgis. You coming? This is where we're meeting. This is where we're stopping. Yeah. See ya. You know what I mean? Like, perfect. I knew you were going to go in with that attitude of like, hey, the concept is this. We got to build a bike. We got to go here at this day. We're doing this ride. That's it. Yeah. Have fun. I'm in. Yeah. And, and, you know, pushing everybody to, you know, not everybody that builds bikes, especially older guys are good at social media. Right. But everybody, they all want to be, they all, they all like, yeah. I want to do better. I want my brand to be more recognized on social media, but you know, do you see Paul out there doing a TikTok dance, like trying to, Hey, <laughs> come get your American made parts here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Although I, I, I would, he actually, might do it. Yeah. I, I would subscribe to that one. I'd be like, yeah. I have to see this happen. The, the thing is like, I, they, they shouldn't have to. I mean, these are, these are guys in our, in our industry that, that have helped keep it alive for a I long know. time. And like, I don't feel like they should have to do that, but at the same time, you know, what for whatever followers versus income, whatever the yeah. ratio is, I don't know. Um, cause <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> uh, you know, whatever, but right. <laughs> at the same time, it's, it's one of those things where like, if I could help them show, like maybe force them to be a little bit more like revealing of what they do, it might show them another way to carry their social media in a way that makes people more engaged with what they're doing on a day-to-day basis. So everything that was put in play, the way that we wanted everybody to do it was about like making it the individual effort. So think about it. You know, one of the biggest things that we got kind of criticized on is that we didn't start an Instagram page for the FXR tour. I don't think you should. I don't either. There's no reason. I feel like the, the brand or the shop or whoever that's the builder, right. Should carry their own, like, uh, not tour. marketing, not marketing, but like you should create your own buzz around your build. Yes. And if you do that, then you're obviously going to have more attention and it's going to get you more excited to want to do even better when you're building. That's what happened to me. Like yeah. when I came out with that or when you came out with the podcast and you like had us all email in and you were reading all that stuff, I watched it live in the shop with like my family and my friends and like, we were waiting as soon as they said, and Randy, I was like, ah, like the whole, like everybody went crazy. And then immediately I knew like I had to do those things. Mm-hmm. And so once I started putting that out there and then like it started coming back with people like, hey man, I'm so excited. Like it just got me even more pumped. So like imagine if I didn't post anything, I would just be sitting there staring at it going, eh, tomorrow, yeah, eh, tomorrow. Because there's, you know, you're not getting that fulfillment from the following, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Of what you're putting out there and yeah. The buzz definitely makes the. If we would have started an Instagram page, I think that every builder would have just relied on us to carry right. the weight of like garnering attention. And the thing is that, like, yes, collectively, uh, an Instagram page would help bring a lot of. It would make it easier for the viewer, but it would I don't just be like a repost. Page. I don't like. Yeah, I don't like the. Yeah, I say fuck the viewers ease. Right. I, I, I'm not into follow it. the builder. Follow the hashtag. And, and that's it. And that's yes. what even made it even better, I felt like, was the obligation to have to post every Friday. Yep. Because if you didn't have shit, not only did you have to get creative with your marketing, but you felt like shit because you had to get creative with your marketing. Because you knew in that last week, if you did some major work and you were going to show this update and it was like, look at what I did versus like half-assing something because you're just like, oh, man, I didn't get to it. I didn't get to it. All that did was add more stress for the next week because you're like, damn, I didn't do shit this week. Like you, yeah. you, like you really got to see like the proof. Like, oh damn, I was too busy, or oh, I did this instead, or I went here instead. It was pr- the concept was perfect, dude. Yes, perfect. And once again, like I, 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 I truly believe that the 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 way that it was went about, like I, we weren't trying to make it a spectacle for for the world. I think it was like, it was four FXR people that wanted to take the initiative to follow the hashtag. And most of them already follow these builders. Yeah. And cool. Now I did get it from like kind of the outside corporate worlds that we had talked to like, Hey, you know, do you have like an Instagram page? Like actually no nerd, uh, right. follow the hashtag. You that's know what, what makes it bet. Like, so, like I said, that's kind of my style. Like it's the underground raw. shit. Like right. I want it to be that. That's exactly what i'm about because i don't want you know let's say next year as we move forward like i don't want it to become this thing where i don't want it to become this thing where like the next set of builders are waiting on for whatever you know who whatever the powers to be are to give them whatever like right you guys are the ones that are building the bikes you make the content grow the fuck up right this is what it is to be a bike builder in 2022 right honestly four yeah, 2020, I've lost. I'm lost. <laughs> 23 going into four. Okay. But, I, you know, obviously, 
some of us got certain things from certain brands. Yeah. But that was not because of what they like what we were doing. It's be, it's because of what we've already done. Yeah. Like I didn't get my sponsorship on said part because I just asked for it. No, yeah. like I over years like put in the work of promoting this brand, selling this brand, making sure I ran this brand without even saying a word to them, paying full price, no problem, even before I was a dealer. Now I go to them, hey, I got this project going. I need this. Do you have said? Oh, yeah, cool. Oh, we'll take care of you. I never asked, like, oh, can you take yeah. care of me? So, like, don't think that, like, on the next couple, you know, rounds of this, that, like, just because you're a part of it, you're going to get something. No, you have to definitely have already put the work in to even be included in this and then receive a benefit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, I mean, the whole, like, getting, like, parts from brands is, is such a, it's different, right? Because back in the day, in the in the heyday of all the chopper shit, like they just gave er- everybody was getting transmissions, Motor, and motors, look, and on YouTube. Wheels. There's a there's a thing called the shovel head uh, build off or something from SNS where all these dudes got shovel head motors, and I'm sitting there, I can't even get an email back about like, do you even have this? Because like drag was sold out for a while. That's why, I, honestly, like I was emailing them. I wasn't emailing for like a free motor. That's like, no, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, it was more like, do you have this, and can I get this in time? And yeah, it's just, it is weird to like navigate because people assume that you get all this stuff, but you don't. (laughs) Like I said, I mean, there, there are certain things that, that I was definitely taking care of, like through, you know, brand deals and sponsorships through like certain products, but you know, uh, and some of those were really big ticket items. Yeah. Like one of my biggest ticket items was, yeah, here you go. And and that's that's awesome, you know. And but it was because I was the number one guy for the last year. Yeah. Like, understandable, perfect, no problem. Like, growing up where I came from and doing the type of business I did before, you sell a lot of stuff. I might give you something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened. So. Well, that's the point, right? So that that's like the difference, you know. Like, with with us, I mean, if I was building a, a an ST, right? Like, I I can get a lot more stuff from the brands that are already my sponsors. Right. Or what whatnot because it's a new bike and most of the products going on this bike is new products that they want to get out to market. And that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. But when you're building a 1984 <laughs> FXR, none of these brands like, you know, we just got a new product coming out that we yeah. can't wait to market. So our number one bike right now is the FXR. Let me tell you what. It's like, no. <laughs> so it's like hard to get kind of uh, you know, I guess you would say sponsored in that realm. Yeah. And you know, the the sponsorship thing's a weird one, right? Because if I if I rode Willie's and you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, they do sponsor, that makes sense. Yeah, and that's like normal in their life. Like, well, it's I think it's normal in the in the in the in the public's eye. Yeah, they look at it like, oh well, that dude knows how to ride a Willie, so yeah, he should get a you know a free you know whatever. Right. But yeah, the I thing mean, is, like, and I never had a sponsor before this either. So like, th- th- this is the this is the thing that I think that that none of it's free. Yeah, yeah, you pay for it in. The stuff you've done before or the stuff you have to do afterwards it's like just because yeah yeah you know just have a lot i mean here's here's the thing is like the the brands are not very uh hip to the game of what it means what followers what what this what everything means in social media right yeah they're still on the whole like 2016 kick of that person has 40 50 60 70 100 thousand followers that's worth money the person has five is not but if the person has five thousand can sell more of your units right. than the person with a hundred thousand, then that hundred thousand person is value is is worthless to you. Yeah. And I've always told people it's like it's not about the follower count; it's about the engagement with the people that you fuck with. The substance. Yeah. If you can convince, and, and I say this conv- like, first off, you if you have the power of influence over anybody, then. With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, scary. Responsibility. Scary. So yeah. the thing is that you want to make sure that when people trust your opinion, the same way that another man would say, "Look, I vouch for this dude." Right. That's how you have to be with the brands you work with. Right. And if you're jumping ship every other week right. looking for a check, then you can't say that. Just check this podcast out. You see Thunder Max behind you, camera right. over there, right? You got Thunder Max. You got Sell Simpson. A lot of those. We you got a lot Lexan. Of those. <laughs> You got things that I've, if you listen to this podcast, I fuck with these brands yeah. for a long time because their products work and they're in the scene. Right. You're going to go do mushrooms with Simpson. <laughs> Millhouse going to come out there and uh, make your day so great because he's so such great. a great person and to be around. And on top of that, he'll answer your phone calls when you call him. You exactly. Got, you need some help. Dude, I do a lot of Thunder Mac stuff and great product. 
great people. So I put my name on it. So it's it's about like building relationships. And to build a relationship, you have to you have to spend your own money. You got to spend your time. You got to build it. You got to figure it out for everybody else. And then whenever whenever it clicks and maybe your content starts to become something that this brand can work with, then you start to tell your your audience and your people. And then there's a mutual benefit because your audience is getting some honest content from you. Right. The brand that's sponsoring you is getting actual feed, like real feedback, real real clicks on their stuff because yeah. the audience trusts you. Right. Like even on like my page or like my website, the parts I sell, I don't just throw a bunch of stuff shit on there like it's all stuff that either like the brand i've used multiple times or that product i've used multiple times or it's like my go-to yeah like you're not gonna see kiriak and shit on my website you know you're not gonna see another brand's exhaust on my website because i don't want to just only make money i want to sell you something that like when you ask me hey how does this fit or how do i install this or yeah, how they go to work? your website because right. it's products you've actually exactly. installed or, used. or they see it on the bikes that i've run or whatever like that creates better engagement i feel like with my followers to then have that conversation with that brand to be like hey look it's there. You, you're Here's vouching for everything that you take out of that drag right. catalog and put on the on right. the website right yeah the same thing with the followers and the promoting of certain products like sure i could turn into this we can all turn into this mega influencer in the motorcycle industry and get all this stuff for free and take all these pictures and sell all this stuff but like it doesn't hold weight and value like yeah where is just gonna sink you know well longevity uh comes from like like a good foundation so if you have a real foundation with the brands that you work with then you can have longevity but you know there's nothing worse and this is this is maybe uh, insight for people that are trying to be you know youtubers or if you want to be in the sponsorship world like to be sponsored by anything it's about building a rep rapport with your the brand you work with and having a mutual set of trust and not something that like if you have a problem you should be able to go to that brand and have an open conversation to solve the problem and then never have to put it into the light right because you're just dealing with it you're dealing with it it's right. like not every brand is perfect not everything is i'm not perfect Nothing right is. so you know i'm not gonna like get my new thunder max and do an unboxing and talk about oh i hate these plastic packages they put them in like right. i'm not doing that right but when I install that thing, turn my bike on after I put a cam on, it fucking runs dialed. Dude. And then I jump on the bike and ride across country. So I, we just did a, a Salt. 32 SNS. Yeah. Hooked the Thunder Max up, dialed it in, went to test run, auto tune, adjusted a couple parameters. This fucking thing is gnarly. Yeah. Like, so gnarly. Then right before that, we did a 124 SNS. Same deal. Thunder Max, plugged it up, boom. It's so easy. Yeah. Like, why would I not want to sell that? Why would I not want to use that? Why would I not want to promote that? Exactly. No reason not to. Like, well, I don't want to even try to even find something else. Like, why would you? It's good. Yeah. And then you come to our camp out and you're, right. you know. Hanging out with the dudes. They're perfect. Amazing. I even see, do I see Mealhouse at almost every event I go to. It's yeah. like, hey, <laughs> you know, it's like perfect. <laughs> yeah. You didn't get, you didn't get to eat steaks with us in, uh, in uh, Born Free, California. I did not. No, yeah. I went and did something else. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was a good it was a good time, but it was also like uh, it was uh, it was when we were trying to recreate the vibe we had the year before. Yeah, and it was it, it was too early in the day. And I was there for the first time, so I was yeah. living my best life. Yeah, so I wouldn't worry about eating steaks. <laughs> well, we didn't touch on everything, but I think we touched on enough. You know what I mean? I felt like this was a, a good great one. revealing of what it was like to be, I guess, behind the scenes leading up to the tour. Uh, some of what. I guess my experiences on the tour, some of yours. There's not enough time to tell everything, man. It's not like you. And it's this one of those is, things where you just some of that stuff you just keep for yourself. Yeah, and and, and you know I was YouTube right, so I, I stopped that YouTube video uh, when we got to Durango, and I got little bits and footage of all the way to the end of Born Free, but not enough to put a video together. But I remember I was doing one little. I, I did a walkthrough of all of our bikes in the uh, San Diego Custom Show. And I was walking back to our tent and I just said this. I was like, you know what? I don't want to show you anything else because I want you to I want you to come to want to come. That's what I was going to tell you. Some of those things you just don't need to show them. Mm -hmm. They need to see it. You need to come experience and it. That was it. That's, yeah. that's all I got. All right. Well, thank you, Rennie. Absolutely. Thank you, Jace. Appreciate it. Until next time. 
Devin did good on these uh, cameras. Amazing. Loudmouth Devin in here. Great pair of uh, glasses there, bud. I don't vouch for any of <laughs>